throughout the day. Rain coming in tomorrow, but it'll hold off today. It is a glorious day here in Knoxville where 95,000 or so will gather to watch the Southeastern Conference battle. Danny Ford and the Arkansas Razorbacks, Philip Fulmer and the Tennessee Volunteers. Ironically enough, Condrich, Philip Fulmer's last collegiate game as a player was against Arkansas. Was that in the bowl game? Bowl game, that sure 71. Was. So uh, he knows something about the Arkansas Razorbacks. Oh, yeah. This Tennessee be... looks like we'll receive. I guess Arkansas will uh, defer. All right. We'll watch for Billy Williams. I don't think they're going to use him, Codridge, on uh, the kickoff. Uh, I would think not. I think Nilo's going to be back there, and uh, they... They're not going to use try to put Billy in any situation to, to re-injure himself. Of course, you can't really get caught up in that either. You got to let players play, and uh, you know Billy's one that if he's called on, we'll get back there and do a little kick return stuff. But I think you can look for something early to open up with the Tennessee offense. All right, Arkansas is set to kick off, and kicking off, Kendrick Jones will be deep, and Nilo Sylvan joins him back there. There's Nilo, number 83. And Lance Ellison will kick off. Lance Ellison, you don't normally think of kickers as this big. He's six foot five and 230 pounds, more like a linebacker or a defensive end. So last he should have some foot there. Boy, last time I saw one that big, he played for UCLA. I think his last name was Courtney. He was huge. He looked like a defensive tackle. <laughs> but you usually don't see kickers that big. But this is a big kid. I watched him warm up. He's got a pretty strong leg, too. All right, we're set for Southeastern Conference football. It's awfully big for both of them. It's huge for Tennessee. They've got Alabama coming in next, then on the road to South Carolina. It doesn't get any easier. It's been a, a brutal schedule for the Volunteers this season. Arkansas coming off a big win over Vanderbilt. There's the boot. It's underway into the corner of the end zone and taken by Nilo Sylvan. 10, 20, still on his feet, fighting. 30, 34-yard line for Nilo Sylvan of Tennessee. And he is hit by Zach Weatherford for the Arkansas Razorbacks. So Tennessee in pretty good field position. And Condrich, that's exactly what they needed to come out of there and get in decent field position for Manning. Exactly. They don't want. To, they didn't want to be backed up, and they want a good field position so they can allow their offense to open up. Which is, rumor has it, they're going to open up the offense this week. You saw the veteran offensive line, the backs and receivers there for the Volunteers. Here's Manning to Stewart. Little man, big hole, crashes across the 40, up to about the 43-yard line. He's moving up on the chart. He needs about 35 yards today, I think, to move up one more notch, and he picked up a chunk of it there. Carl Kidd, number two out of the secondary, made the stop. What, a better, what a better way to open up a running play than to put rumors out that you're going to open up the field and throw the ball, get in a passing <laughs> formation, and run the ball. There you go. <laughs> so you trick him. <laughs> Little man averaging almost six yards per carry. Here he comes outside. Got some daylight still fighting across the 30 down to the Arkansas 26-yard line. Waylon Wisham trailed and made the play. Wisham, a defensive tackle, trailed it and made the stop. This is just basically a little off tackle play and he, uh, little man Stewart has the option to break it outside which he does and right there you can see the added pounds in the muscle that he put on this year has really paid off for him. He just kind of just is shucking people off a little stiff arm there but he's a lot stronger man than he was last year this year. They pitch it to him again. He finds some more daylight on the right side this time. James Stewart crosses the 25 to about the 23 yard line before he is stopped by Curtis Thomas. And a look at the Arkansas defensive line. Adair is the key man there. They're all good football players, but Adair is extremely active, number 50. The Arkansas linebackers make the bulk of the tackles. Trent Knapp has come on well. Mark Smith is in there on many, many plays this year, and he has come in for a lot of praise for, from Danny Ford. All right, Tennessee driving with the football. It started with a good kick return by Nilo Sylvan, and they moved it on the ground with Little man Stewart. They fake it to Stewart. Manning rolls, throws in the flat. It's complete to Bose Phillips. And he's knocked out of bounds around the 15, maybe inside the 15 yard line by Del Delco. Free safety made the stop. Delco's a big safety, six foot, 208 pounds. That, that little naked bootleg is, was set up perfectly by the three previous running plays. They went out of the same formation, faked the ball, went a little naked reverse, and uh, 
completed the pass right in the flat there, and it was just it was a perfect call. So it's first down and goal to go for the Big Orange. Arkansas jumping, and Arkansas read this one. Tennessee breaks it out of there. Beautiful play. Down across the five-yard line, just sensational running by James Stewart, Delco, and Kidd in the secondary made the stop. What an effort, Condridge. There again, that little weight training in the offseason really pays off. This this should have been a dead play. That's two tackles missed right there, but that's because the, of the continuous effort of little man Stewart, who just wouldn't give up. And hey, if he doesn't stumble over his own feet there, he scores. Probably so. Second down and goal at the six-yard line. Balls in the eye back. Wide receivers on the right side. Touchdown. In scoring is Mose Phillips on a dive off the left side. Beautiful move by the big senior from Nashville, Tennessee. Mose Phillips, who's one of the leaders on this team and a real spark plug. I, I thought his play last week against Washington State, a short run, Condridge, by what standards we call short runs, 13 yards, I guess, but might have been the big play last week. It really was. And I tell you what, this series has been indicative of good play calling and good setting up play calling. By that, I mean utilizing formation to get the certain defensive look you want and exploiting that with a running play. They were lining up mostly in passing formations, but boy, I tell you, they just did a great job of running the football. Beck Sports kick is good, and he's now two away from the Southeastern Conference consecutive mark held by Alabama's Van Tiffen. So the balls with a very impressive opening drive, marching from their own 34 and rolling in primarily on the running of Little Man Stewart. One swing pass out of there, and then Mose Phillips kept it with a six yard run for the touchdown behind the Tennessee offensive line. All right, Tennessee will kick off now. Arkansas will be back to receive, and the kick returners are Carl Kidd and Madre Hill. Madre Hill, by the way, number 34, is an exciting ball player. There's Danny Ford pacing the sidelines, not exactly happy with his defense in that first drive. The defense came in ranked number three in the SEC. What a glorious day for football. It is absolutely perfect. Temperature in the low 70s. Sunshine bathing Neyland Stadium. And, and the, the kickers on like top. No wind. The kickers like this. And they're playing on the real thing, Condry. The real grass. No more turf burn. Bexport is set to kick off. Carl Kidd and Madre Hill are the deep men for the Razorbacks. Kidd is six foot 198. Hill, you're going to be hearing a lot of him in the next few years in the Southeastern Conference. Highly recruited freshman, a big prize catch for Arkansas. Here's the boot. It's high and not too deep. And it's going to be taken by Kidd. He's got a little bit of daylight and then it closes on him big time. Greg King unloaded on him. King has the reputation of being a real big hitter, and Condridge, he's slowly working himself into more playing time, along with Tyrone Hines. Those are two men that Tennessee really will have to depend on. Arkansas offensive line, they've got some experience there. Pat Baker is a senior. The others are sophomores and juniors. And the backs and receivers, Barry Lunny operating out of the quarterback position. Johnson. And right away a flag falls. We may have had movement here. Little movement, left tackle. Little offensive line movement there, pre-snap. Marius Johnson opens the tailback, and Tyrone Henry, our Oscar Gray, will open at the uh, fullback position. He was held out of last week's game. There you see the Lunny numbers, and he's very impressive. He can, as Condridge pointed out, in pregame. He can run the football, and he can throw the football. Motion penalty here. Danny Ford held his two senior fullbacks out last week against Vanderbilt. They dressed, but they did not play because they had not been attending class. So that matter has been resolved. So Gray is in at fullback and Johnson at tailback. And the handoff. First man in the middle. A little bit of room in there, but I believe another flag is down out here. Shane Burton was the primary tackler that time for the volunteers. The officials will confer. Offside is going to be called against Tennessee. So we've had two plays here in the Arkansas series and two penalties. One on Arkansas, this one on Tennessee. 
That had that to be a lining off. up off slides because nobody jumped. That's kind of when you've got to watch the ball. That's one of those inexcusable penalty penalties. Just watch the ball. Johnson at tailback. Gray at fullback. Receivers split on both sides this time. Lunny looks. Rolls down the line, pitches out. Tennessee covered it pretty well, but he still made a good move. And Shane Burton trailing made the stop for the Tennessee Volunteers, along with Ben Talley, pick number 90 in on that one. Johnson has got some very good moves. That time he looked like he was going to be trapped for no gain and uh, turned it into a little something. Jason Parker got a little bit overexcited there wanting to make a big hit. He kind of overran that play. He could have made a tackle for a loss, but settle down. He'll settle down. All at the 32 yard line of Arkansas. And they dive over left guard there. That's uh, Oscar Gray, 6'2, 250 pound senior. And he appears to have the uh, yardage. He needed a couple and he got a little more than that. Tennessee defensively with Tally at end along with White, Burton and Taylor at the tackle positions. Jesse Sanders opens at linebacker along with Tyrone Hines and Scott Gallion. And then the true freshman Terry Fair along with Austin Parker and Davis in the secondary for Tennessee. Here's Lunny. Keeping pitching outside last minute coming up to make the stop on Johnson one of the secondary players for the Volunteers. So. They got outside Condridge uh, looking pretty good on that one. Well it's just basically an option play to the short side of the field. Take away the dive option and this is a little daring pitch right there. That's uh, that's kind of testy. <laughs> Mr. Lunny I don't think wants to make that pitch that often but that was a good play by Arkansas and uh, they got outside as you said and picked up uh, almost the first down. Gallion and Parker responsible for the stop. Arkansas with the football. Hand off on the belly series in the middle and Tennessee jams it up that time. Absolutely nothing that time from Oscar Gray the fullback Corey Stone Ben Talley. All thing, in on the tackle. One thing about the veer offense if you don't run it yourself as an offense it takes a little time to, to emulate it at practice. You can't really get the timing down. So the longer this game goes on the more you'll see the Tennessee v defense adapt to that timing that Arkansas has with the option of the, the beer play. Big down here third down. Here's Lonnie dropping the football. Tennessee has recovered. Scott Gallion recovers for Tennessee. Barry Lonnie just simply bobbled the handoff and uh, when he turned around Conridge never had complete control. Take a look. That's uh, just a little miscommunication here. I don't know if he meant to. It looked like he meant to leave it in instead of pulling it out with a fullback, and uh, it was just a, a miscommunication there and a little fumble. And that's something that we t we iterated at the beginning of the show. Something Arkansas cannot allow their team to do is turn the ball over. They're not very good when they do that. Leland Taylor was partly responsible for that fumble. He was hitting the fullback just as uh, the ball was put in his stomach. Here comes the reverse. Nilo Sylvan, Arkansas, playing it pretty well, but Nilo with great speed gets to the corner and gets some yardage out of it before Willie Johnson runs him down from linebacker. That play was set up perfectly. It's only a good play by the Arkansas defensive end. Was that Willie Johnson? I tell you, if he doesn't, if he doesn't make this play, slow this reverse down. There's a wall of Tennessee blockers out in front, and that could have been a very, very big play. Nilo has got tremendous speed of course he's a member of the University of Tennessee track team as well. One of several players on the squad from Louisiana. Peyton Manning puts it in the stomach of his tailback. Little man drives down to the 25 yard line. Aaron Hayden who has replaced Stewart at tailback number 24. The other senior tailback. Both Aaron Hayden too. Uh, Codridge has picked up weight and gotten a lot stronger. Both of them took it upon themselves this offseason to get bigger and stronger and you can see it pays off. They they run through arm tackles now and it takes a few people to bring them down. They're not just going to get arm tackled anymore. They they put on weight and they uh, plan to throw their weight around a little bit this year. Here's that Stewart and Hayden have really come to play today. Here's the handoff to Hayden. Hayden gets uh, fakes to Hayden. Beautiful fake out. Beautiful 
beautiful pass, and it is complete to Marcus Nash, a true freshman. Hey, Manning showed me something on that one, Conrich. Well, he has a he has a big time arm, and so does Brandon Stewart. And you know, it's just a matter of time. But I tell you what, you you saw what's going to be one of the mainstays around here for a while because Peyton Manning does have a big time arm. He makes a good read here, and he just lets it go. Like, like his daddy, huh? Yes. <laughs> Tell you what, Hayden carried out the fake beautifully and took a couple of men with him. Fumble in the end zone, and let's see who's got it. Arkansas. I, I believe they do. Delco may be on top of it. Uh, Phillips fumbled, and it's rolled into the end zone, and Delco did recover for the Hogs. Big break for Arkansas. Tennessee's had one big break. Didn't take advantage. They turn it over and now Arkansas will have it out at the 20 yard line since it was recovered in the end zone. Somebody grabbed the arm just as he started in looks like Conrich really didn't see. Oh there it is right there just miscommunication handoff wise and uh, I don't think Mose ever ever had control of that. Ball. No I don't think so. And. Uh, turnovers turnovers are something teams that aren't winning can't afford to do. It's seven to nothing in favor of Tennessee. They took the opening drive out after the kick return at their own 34. Drove it primarily on the ground. Now Arkansas trying to drive and carrying the football is Oscar Malone. George Kidd from a linebacker position made the stop for Tennessee. Oscar Malone has been a little bit uh, banged up this year. In fact, he did not play last week against Vanderbilt. He had a hamstring pull. They held him out of that game. He's not 100% right now, but he's their top runner. And he looked pretty good on that one. There you see Oscar's uh, 56 rushes for 356 yards, averaging over six yards per carry. Lunny may be checking off here at the line of scrimmage, appears to be. And Tennessee was waiting. He checked off into the strength of the team that time. Shane Burton made the stop. Billy Barron it was in on that too. There is Barron in there now. He's going to play quite a bit today. One of the young defensive guns for Tennessee. We're probably going to see Trey Peterson some today at tight end. Keep that in mind. He wears he will wear as a tight end number 99 too. Here is the quarterback rolling back. Lenny the left hander fires it out here. It is incomplete. Shannon Sidney was the intended receiver led him just a little too far Ronald Davis on the cover that time for Tennessee. So Arkansas after getting the break uh, unable to move the football Tennessee had fumbled in the end zone Arkansas recovered and now they will have to go into punt formation. John Summers will be deep and Matt Waite will punt for Arkansas. There's Sean. I tell you that was a big series for the Tennessee defense to respond to after a turnover to stop Arkansas like that. And now it just remains to see how the Tennessee offense will respond after the defense has gotten the ball back. Nice punt. Summer settles under it at about the 28. Looks for the wall and finds a little bit of room. Not much though. Couldn't quite get to the corner, but Tennessee will be in pretty good field position. Now let's go down on the sidelines and check in with Missy Kane. Missy? Thanks, guys. I got Dewey Warren. Of course, Dewey had a lot of publicity last year when Heath Shuler finally broke that, what, 27 years you held most TDs for Tennessee with 18. And matter of fact, last year at Arkansas is when he tied it. You were down there. Arkansas, he tied it, and uh, it helped for a long time, and that was unusual, really. But uh, a good guy broke it. And how about Peyton? Young guy. I guess it was very important today to talk about that first pass just a little while ago to Marcus. Well, it was. You know, he's got a good number on, if you know. 16 is a good number, but yeah, uh, of course, of course. <laughs> Peyton is an excellent quarterback, along with Brandon Stewart, and these kids are very poised for, uh, for to be as young as they are. And and I think Tennessee is very fortunate to have these two. You think they're going to open it up a little bit, a little bit today? They run it so far and it's been successful. Well, when you got them running backs and that big offensive line, you know, it makes the passing game a lot easier. But I would prefer to open it up a little bit and get the crowd into it. Okay, of course you guys know the old Swamp Rat. And real quickly, you got a book out. You were peddling that book today. What's it we, called? We got a book out, Legacy of the Swamp Rat, and then we got books and shirts, and uh, we've gone through almost 9,000 out a month, and it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with it. Okay, and mainly the book is about Tennessee quarterbacks that beat Alabama. Alabama's next, but today they look great. All right, thank 
you may see a couple of runs there by Aaron Hayden looking good but a flag down on the last play and so everything may be brought back right it's here thrown in one of those holding areas <laughs> it looks like a holding penalty that's been a problem for Tennessee especially in the Mississippi State game they had holding. 10 penalties in on that one. And this one is holding and a uh, very the costly one moves the ball back now to the 36 yard line by the way folks uh, you may experience here for a brief time in a few minutes uh, some technical problems that's due to sunspots and uh, that will last only very briefly so we warn you in advance uh, it could be a three or four minute span there where you might have some brief interruption but that's the reason sunspots and hey that's out of our control here's a pass right into the hands of Billy Williams couldn't hang on to it Hey, Condridge I guess missing uh, several ball games a little bit rusty there a little bit rusty but uh, he he also had, didn't get a lot of time practice wise in the last couple of weeks because of the injury but this ball folks was thrown on the line and that's the that's one of the toughest passes any quarterback can throw is to get on that right hash and throw the out to the field and there was no question about that when it was on time and it was right there and that's the freshman all right there's Billy out once again I wouldn't be surprised to see him go right back to him right here out of the shotgun this time Manning hands off inside to Aaron Hayden on a little delay and not much action there closing in was Don Bray from the secondary or middle linebacker position that time Bray backs up Trent Knapp at middle linebacker for the Arkansas Razorbacks Tennessee here in the first quarter leading by a score of seven to nothing as a sun drenched crowd of ninety five thousand or so watch and there's the true freshman quarterback Peyton Manning we probably will see Brandon Stewart at some point today Tennessee with uh, four receivers out this trip Manning once again out of the shotgun wants to throw got some time fires a little too high a little too strong intended for Marcus Nash Another true freshman. Freshman to freshman on that one. I think Peyton would like to have that one back. He got he got fooled a little bit, but uh, that, he did the smart thing when he realized he made a mistake. He put it on the in the air to the sideline. Tennessee couldn't get it. Nobody was going to get it. So a good decision was made, even though he realized he was going to the wrong side. Probably. He had his back to receive. That holding penalty hurt Tennessee, and in essence stopped any sort of a, a drive they might have had at this point. So. Hutton is in the punt. And he gets <laughs> all of it. All of it. I watched, him, I watched him warm up today, and he was kicking them like that in, in warm up. So he's, I think last week has kind of vaulted him. <laughs> he likes that pressure. He, he likes that. There's 25 punts for a 40 yard average. Longest one was 58, and I think that might have occurred last week. It did, and may have been the, the winning play, as a matter of fact. And with that average uh, coverage, some of those have been kicked for the quarter or out of bounds. So when you look at a 40 yard average, in essence, it could be a lot better than that. That's right. The swamp rat didn't let that number get out of it. He wanted everybody to know that 16 was a pretty good number, huh? <laughs> All right. Harry Lunny brings his team up to the line of scrimmage. Oscar Malone is in a tailback right now. Four of the Hogs have been pretty well stymied on offense. They fire complete. And the hit is made immediately out there. Anthony Eubanks is on the receiving end for the Hawks. Jason Parker coming up from safety to make the stop. Nice play, though. Just a basic drop back, two man route, play action pass. Little hook inside, and outside receiver runs an outside hook. So you go inside out. You go from inside out. Whichever linebacker doesn't drop back, you throw the inside receiver. That was a good play. A little bit short of the first down, second down. Lunny perhaps checking off again. Hands off to his tailback, and not much there. Oscar Malone is nailed right at the line of scrimmage. Scott Gallion made the hit. Now let's go down to Missy. I'm with Joe Ferguson, of course, Joe Clay, quarterback for the Razorbacks back in the late 1607. He's in play for the Buffalo Bills. Tell me a little bit about Lonnie. Um, Lonnie started his first game here two years ago. So consistent in having a tough time today. Well, it takes a team effort. It can't be done just by one guy. Lonnie's a great quarterback. He needs some help from the rest of his offensive line and running backs right now. I was surprised to hear two years ago. He was a true freshman. Called some audibles at the line. He has a lot of confidence. And Coach, he 
second down. Well, that's his long suit. He's a very heady quarterback. He knows what he's supposed to do. He gets the job done. He doesn't make very many mistakes. All right. Dave Burton uh, put the stop on him that last play. So it was a punting situation here for Arkansas. Godrick's defense early. Very impressive. They are very impressive. And that front four has really just made a push. They're winning the line of scrimmage. They are not getting pushed back. They're actually penetrating and, and causing a little havoc with the offense of Arkansas. All right, here's the kick away. Summer is going to come up and take it. It's a relatively short kick, and he's looking for some daylight retreating and retreating a little too far. Couldn't find uh, the blocking, couldn't find the wall, but Tennessee's still going to be in excellent position. Jesse Cornelius. Made the stop that time for the Arkansas Razorbacks on the punt return. And now Tennessee puts it in play first down and 10 to go here in the first quarter of play. Balls on top, 7 to nothing. Took the opening drive, went down for a touchdown, threatened again after recovering an Arkansas fumble. And then the ball fumbled the ball into the end zone, and Arkansas recovered it. So that drive was stopped. Peyton Manning remains the quarterback. They've been alternating their tailbacks. Aiden and Stewart. Chester Ford at fullback. Whiteouts all over the place this time, and Manny comes back, throws out of this lap. Nice move. Pick up of almost 10 yards that time. Ronnie Pillow, is that Pillow in there? Number three, yes it was. Just a little slip, uh, slip screen to the short side of the field. You use, put all your motion to one side, throw a little slip screen out, your linemen out in front are able to block because the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And that could turn into a big play, especially if you catch it in a blitz. That's a touchdown for the freshman. Again, we remind you that for a very brief period here, we may have some interference from sunspots, but that will be over, uh, hopefully, very quickly. And, uh, if you experience some difficulty, that will be the reason. Nice fake by Manning, and he wants to go deep. He wants to go for all of it. And almost completed it to Billy Williams. Nice effort by Arkansas covering that time, though. Brown, it was, I believe, Spencer Brown. Well, at least, country the message was sent to Arkansas that they will go deep. They'll go deep and will stretch you. Make sure that you, they, that was a signal right there. To just let Arkansas know that we will throw the ball, and as an offense, we will open it up a little bit. So don't come up and just try to play the run all the time. All right, Peyton Manning looking over the Arkansas defense. And first man in, Moe Phillips is fullback. First down. And he got it, I believe. Looks like from our vantage point, he has the first down. Junior Solly, who's a 289-pound nose guard, made the stop for the Hawks of Coach Danny Ford. We'll miss coming up next for Wow. Him, so. That was a different kind of spot right there. <laughs> that was... Uh, might have to measure this one. I thought he had it by a half yard, but now as we look, I'm not sure he made it. He made it by the length of the ball. Half of the ball. Good eyes, quarterback. <laughs> Tennessee with the football, first down and 10 to go. Ball resting at their own 48-yard line. You're in a position on the field where pretty much you can... Uh, Go with a variety of plays, Conridge. Defense is in a predicament when you're in this sort of a position. First down and tend to go near midfield. Right, and they've gone to the passing type of formation with a tight end. Fake pass out in the flat, complete. Kendrick Jones brings it down in Arkansas territory at about the 39-yard line. Tracy Catlope made the stop for Arkansas. From his safety position. Take a look at him. Just a little play action pass. Good fake there by Peyton Manning. Good throw. Good catch. Hold on to the ball. Actually, good defensive play also, but just a good execution by the Tennessee offense. And you got a first down, Tennessee. Balls move it to the 39 yard line in Arkansas territory. There's the handoff, and nothing this time. In fact, there's going to be a loss of a yard or so. Jay Graham was the ball carrier, and Marcus Adair made the stop. The razor end, they call his position. He's not very big at most 230 pounds, kind of 
small for a defensive lineman in this day and time, but he is very, very fast. He's from Tennessee, by the way, from Memphis. Of course, there's a Arkansas native on that offensive line right now, Leslie Ratliff for the University of Tennessee. Peyton Manning with a wing on the left side. Fires it out in the flat. It's complete. Mr. Staley. Staley is down to, and I believe he got the first down. He did. He had just passed the marker. Maurice Staley wears a number that's uh, pretty familiar around here, number 21. Well, I was, when I saw that number, I said, this kid is either a great player or very bold. <laughs> I think he's going to be a great player, though, because <laughs> taking that number really, uh, you, you've got to be pretty, pretty confident to grab that number. What they like about him is he's so physical, and you saw it right there. He's a 200-pound receiver. Here's Tennessee trying to get some running room, sweeping outside, and uh, not a whole lot there for Graham as Smith comes up and Curtis Thomas, linebacker in defensive tackle, making the stop. It's good to see him get Jay Graham in there, much uh, publicized youngster coming out of Carolina and probably has more speed than any of the uh, Tennessee backs. It's just a matter of Conridge, I think, of getting him some confidence. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, he's from Kannapolis, North Carolina, isn't he? And that's where. Uh, Another famous Tennessee running back, Haskell Stanback. Mr. Stanback. That's right. That's my buddy. He'll, he'll have to do a lot to live up to Haskell's record. So. Here's and a I delay. Arkansas smells it, and still Tennessee's Graham displays a lot of athletic ability to keep from losing ground. Actually turns it into a pretty decent game. Carl Kidd made the stop. Strong safety along with Vincent Bradford from a linebacker position on that side. That's a, that's a basic handoff, and that's just effort, folks. That's something that you can't teach that. That's that's effort, and uh, just not to quit it. Continuous effort. Well, that's the end of the first quarter of play, and the crowd likes what they see on the scoreboard here, at least the Tennessee partisans. There's a pretty good gathering across the way from Arkansas, people who come in here to watch their Razorbacks play. And at the end of one period of play, Tennessee on top by a score of 7 to nothing. Godrich Holloway. Yours truly, Bob Bell, and Missy Kane down on the field. We're happy to have you with us on this video seat production here in Knoxville on a beautiful day. Big Southeastern Conference battle. Balls get ready for arch rival Alabama coming in next week, but they've got three quarters to not think about Alabama, to think about Arkansas, because the last time Arkansas came in here, Tennessee was favored by three touchdowns. Arkansas won the football game, and in so doing, Condridge, it wound up in the end costing Tennessee the Eastern Division Championship. It sure did. I will, I will, I'll always remember that I wasn't here. I was working out of town and I heard that score and I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it because earlier the uh, I believe Arkansas scored something like 14 points in two minutes or so. It was a huge loss for Tennessee and a big big win for Arkansas on that particular day. Money at that time was a freshman. They brought him in. He did a beautiful job. Tennessee driving with the football now in Arkansas territory. Jay Graham remains in a tailback. They fake it to Graham. They roll Touchdown. out. Touchdown. Wide open. Touchdown. Oh, Phillips. Beautiful swing pass. Nice faking by the backs and by Peyton Manning. And a beautiful move by Mose Phillips. That was a good execution. I think Tennessee had Arkansas a little confused with formation because they didn't line up enough people on the right side to cover two receivers. They only had one linebacker there. No, no. If you'll watch right here, it's just a little rollout. There's two two receivers open. Uh, Nilo was open, open also, but uh, that was a good play by Mose just getting it into the end zone. Beautiful block by Jeff Smith also to protect Manning, give him enough time to throw. And Bexport moves to within one point of the SEC record or one kick. The record is held by Mantiffin of Alabama and Bexport continues to be perfect with the extra point. So the balls are on top 14 to nothing against the Arkansas Razorbacks, but that is not safe. You've got to be very careful in a Southeastern Conference football game. Tennessee knows they can't let up, and on the other side, Danny Ford knows, hey, 14 points can be made up rather quickly. Another look, little play action fake. If you'll see both linebackers take the fake, and there's two receivers open. And Peyton gets the ball to uh, Mose Phillips. He does the rest. Mose has a tendency for that uh, end zone. 
Nalo Silva was the other wide receiver there. Great block by Nalo also. Jeff Smith and Nilo both drew beautiful blocks on that one. Those are things that show up when they grade the film tomorrow. And I tell you what, Coach Kippy Brown really emphasizes his wide receivers blocking downfield. That's something they practice. That's something they live with all the time. He always stresses that. You will always be in the game if you get down, because you never know with the running backs that Tennessee has, and as fresh as they can keep them because they have so many, any play could break all the way, and it could depend on your block as a wide receiver. And Coach Brown really emphasizes that. All right, we're set to kick off now. The Tennessee Vols will be kicking off. Carl Kidd is the deep man. Here's Bexford's kick. It's going to go all the way to the goal line. Kidd will come out of there to the five, the ten. And he's going to be hit shy of the 20 yard line. Nice coverage downfield by Ronnie Pillow from Columbia, Tennessee. He's going to be an outstanding running back for Tennessee when his time comes and his time will come next year because Hayden and Stewart and Phillips are all going to graduate. So Jay Graham and Ronnie Pillow will be the men counted on to carry the load next year. A play like that usually fires people up. I mean, the fans really haven't gotten into this game yet but I, let's see how the defense reacts after a good play on special teams. Johnson's in a tailback now for the Hawks. Lunny rolling. Wants to throw, getting some pressure, and not enough. He completes it out here across the 25 to James Perry. Perry is a 5'8, 173 pound sophomore. Sean Summers and Nick Jester hit on the tackle that time for the Volunteers. Lunny showed excellent poise here, just letting this play develop. He bought a little time by sprinting out a little more and let the defense really stretch and get back and through to his underneath guy, and that was, uh, that was just an excellent play. It's close to a first down. They're going to, I think, bring the chains in to make sure. Chains will be brought in. And we remind you that the Alabama game next uh, week will start at a, a rather different time, 5.30 Central and 6.30 Eastern time. 6.30 here in Knoxville, and that's Alabama and Tennessee next week. It looks like perhaps it is enough for a first down. Andrew, you made a good point there. Lunny really is a, a quarterback that doesn't seem to get rattled. He, he's I tell you, starting as a freshman, though, get, well, getting some playing time as a freshman. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like for freshmen to play, but if they can get playing time, it really shows up in their poise later on in their careers. And I think we're seeing that right now with uh, Mr. Lunny. He's done a good job. Well, on the 26, Johnson is in a tailback now. He and Malone have been alternating there. Lunny may be checking off at the line of scrimmage. Tennessee's got about uh, eight men on the front right now. A couple of them back off. Lunny still got plenty of time. Now he's being rushed at the last second. His pass is incomplete. The Tennessee defender, Davis, and the receiver, J.J. Metters, collided over there, but it was not pass interference. Although Davis is trying to talk the official into making <laughs> offensive pass interference. I think, I think... Barry Lunny got fooled by here. He, he thought he saw blitz. He checked into a little quick out play. The Tennessee defense dropped back into a zone after giving a blitz look, and he didn't get what he thought he was going to get and had to end up throwing it away. But that was mutual interference, I think. Both of them fell down. A good no call, as they say. Lunny rolls back. Got pressure! Jammed! Stopped! Fumbled! Tennessee football. Raymond Austin. You couldn't have disguised that blitz any better. He waited for the last minute to blitz because it looked like it was his own. And I tell you, Barry Lunny took a heck of a shot right there. I hope he's okay because he didn't, he never saw what was coming. Take a look at it on the replay. Never saw it. He was level. He's looking downfield and he never saw it. Wow. Jesse Sanders also in there. Steve White. Tennessee that, really brought him that time. That blitz was just perfectly timed. Raymond Austin comes up with a big, big play. And Tennessee in beautiful position right here. James right. Littleman Stewart now in at the lone running back position. Ooh. Manning rolls on a naked. Reverse out there and may have had it intercepted. It was by Mike 
Nunnerly. The flow went to the right. Manning went to the left, trying to fool everybody, and he fooled no one. Marcus Nash was the intended receiver. Well, I tell you, Peyton had that to do over again. He walks into the end zone, just run it, pull it down underneath, and run it. There was nobody. He fooled the contain with the play action fake, as there you can is. see. And there's two blockers in front of him, and nobody out in front of him. I think if he had it to do over again, he tucked that one down and walk into the end zone. But you know, you, you got freshmen. They're gonna make mistakes. You got to live with it. You just hope it's minimal. And that was one I'm sure Peyton wish he had back. Inside the 15, Tennessee fails twice now to score. Once they fumbled from their six yard line into the end zone. This time they had it inside the 15 and threatening to go in and at the interception catches them this time. So the defense is back on the field. Balls, despite those two failures, still lead 14 to nothing. But you can't keep doing that all day, Conrad. You can't keep letting the golden opportunities pass you by. You surely can. I tell you, we that just like we mentioned at the opening, turnovers something that neither one of these teams can allow themselves to get caught up in and already we've got four turnovers two by each team ball is intercepted in the end zone pulled out to the 20 yard line right in the middle of the field and that's where Arkansas will put it in play Tennessee leading by a score of 14 to nothing here in the second quarter in Knoxville well neither team is taking advantage of a turnover yet uh, Two for Tennessee resulted in their deep Tennessee's defense stopping Arkansas and the same thing has happened on the other side of the ball. Let's see what our Arkansas's offense can do to capitalize on the turnover. Philip Fulmer doesn't seem to be a real happy camper at the very moment. I don't think so. There's Danny Ford trying to rally his Arkansas Razorbacks. While we've got a moment we want to remind you that the announcers for this game have been Contracted for and approved by host communications and a use rebroadcast or other transmission of this game without the written consent of video seat and host communications is prohibited. We got a little time stoppage because the 25 second clock's not working. Is that what we've got there? I believe that's the case. I thought it was the scoreboard clock for a moment, but apparently it is the 25 second clock. Now there it's it showing is. 25 it and counting down. It's there working. you see it. It is working and Lunny better get it moving or he's going to be in a delay situation. He got it off in time. He fires incomplete. Got enough pressure that time. Anthony Eubanks was the intended receiver. Leland, Leland Taylor had those hands up and coming strong. Did a good job. He didn't actually get to the passer but he did uh, put his hands up and jump a little bit and caused a errant throw. Jason Lehman, by the way, has left uh, the game with a leg injury that will be evaluated later. Who will be seeing some action in there in the offensive line? Here is Lunny keeping, turning the corner. Got big yardage. Got a first down before Scott Gallion trailing the play made the stop for Tennessee. Nice move that time by the Arkansas quarterback, Barry Lunny. Good decision. Not to give to the first guy. It's just a an option play that the first option was taken away. Barry Lunny pulls it out and goes downfield. He's really wanting to pitch this ball, but he made a great decision not to try to a wild pitch and picked up 12, 13 yards, first down Arkansas. Arkansas Razorbacks with the ball just across the 35 yard line, their own 35. Lunny rolls, fires in the flat, complete and knocked down immediately. James Perry is hit over there by Ronald Davis number one but they pull it back and he picked up some uh, pretty decent yardage out of it put it on a, almost the 42 yard line make it second down and uh, roughly six to go for a first down for the Hogs as they try to generate some offense they've had some mistakes Tennessee's had some mistakes the Tennessee leads 14 to nothing actually should be leading perhaps by a couple more touchdowns. Here's Lenny faking going down the line pitching late this time and it will be a first down and a little bit more as Madre Hill 
a true freshman 182 pounder is finally stopped by Raymond Austin. All right, let's go down on the sidelines to Missy Kane. Missy? Dr. Bill Youngman. Bill Youngman is the UT doctor, does all the surgery. Bill, you just operated on Jerry, had, was operated on Tuesday. Um, how did you look so far? So far, so good. Operated on Tuesday, surgery went fine, went home the same day. He was amazing to me. I saw him out working out at different gyms around town even before surgery. Yeah, that's what we wanted him to do. Makes it easier for his rehab after he gets operation done. Nowadays, you can do it arthroscopically, so much better way for surgery. Jerry's got the attitude. When do you think we could see him back? We could ex probably reasonably expect him ready to play football in about six months, maybe a little earlier. Of course, I know he's trying to get that medical hardship, and they're going to apply for that. Does it seem to you that Jerry wants to play again next year, try to get another year back? I haven't talked to Jerry about that. Okay. How about the situation today? It seemed like injuries have been plaguing the balls. Jason Lehman went out. He's the only one so far. How is he, and how's the team look so far today? Billy Williams. I think Jason's going to be okay. He's got a mild ligament injury to his knee, but I think he, he thinks he can play, and we're going to let him we'll see if he can. Billy Williams looks back. He looks like he's Billy back. Billy Williams definitely back. Okay, thank you so much. I know you can okay. scoot over there. All thank right, thanks so much. Tyrone Hines made that last big hit, and once again, Ben Talley roars in. Ball is loose. Picked up by the Volunteers. It's Tyrone Hines. He's gone. Ben Talley made the hit. Tyrone Hines made the touchdown. There's another true freshman. <laughs> big play, big play. Well, that's part of the movement, Condridge. They moved Talley to defensive end. That's worked. They moved Tyrone Hines to middle linebacker. That has worked. There's Talley stripping the ball. It's loose. That was a mistake there. They fight for it. Finally, it's picked Mr. up by Hines. Tyrone Hines. He is a sophomore, by the way. I said true freshman. He's a sophomore. But you'll, I think you'll hear a lot from him. He's going to be a player. All right. I believe this could tie the record right here. It's up by Bexport, and it is good. John Bexport sets it through. Tennessee leads 21 to nothing as the defense comes up with a big score and a big play for Tennessee. Tyrone Hines that we've heard so much about was the man on the spot but it was Ben Talley who really made the play. One thing about that play is that you know when you're quarterback in trouble you always want to secure the ball. I mean whatever if you have taken a sack it's better than giving up a fumble. So you have to secure the ball when you get around opposing players and uh, that time uh, just didn't happen. Mr. Lunny just didn't uh, secure the ball and fumble was caused. Mr. Hines picks it up and it's six points. That number 91 that you saw trying to pick up the ball was a true freshman. That's Jonathan Brown who's going to be according to Larry Marby a truly great defensive lineman. But he again is a true freshman. Carl Kidd and Madre Hill are deep to receive Beck Sports kick. Tennessee leading by a score of 21 to nothing here with 12 27 to go first half action in Knoxville Southeastern Conference battle. Tennessee's had that one big offensive spurt this year against Georgia and in other games they have really struggled with the offense. Wow. Here's the kick all the way into and out of the end zone so Bexport after tying the mark I guess. Condridge got a little pumped. A little, little excited. Kickers do that. They get, they get excited about the strangest things. <laughs> Take a look at some other scores. Georgia leading Clemson 23 to nothing. Wow. Coach West. Jeez. And there's <laughs> East Carolina and South Carolina. No score in the first quarter of play. Florida, as you would expect, leading LSU by a score of 20 to nothing. Wow. Look at that. Could that happen again? Could it happen again? <laughs> North Carolina on top of Georgia Tech in the second period 17 to 7. Some of the early games today around the country and we hope the weather everywhere is as nice as it is here. I doubt it though because it's perfect here. It's a beautiful day. Luddy didn't like what he saw and he's going to call a timeout as Arkansas is behind 21 to nothing and Condridge if you've got any doubt at all at this stage when you're down by three touchdowns in the first half on the road. You better be sure. You gotta be sure, and I tell you what, he Barry Lunny is getting hit 
lot too much. He's getting hit way too much. He shouldn't be. I mean, his offensive linemen have got to take a little better care of him. And I know he, he's been fooled a few times by blitzes, but uh, the Tennessee defensive front has really put pressure on him. They're not necessarily tackling him all the time, but they're always around him. And when you get around the quarterback that much and he doesn't have clear vision, it causes him to hurry, causes him to do things that he doesn't want to do. This is the uh, third straight weekend that Arkansas has played a team from Tennessee. <laughs> they played Memphis State. Then Vanderbilt and today the Volunteers. So they pretty well taken on just about everybody they can Old take state. on in the state of Tennessee. I guess UTC and ETSU the only two left. <laughs> Volunteers up 21 to nothing here in Knoxville. They came in favored in most quarters by about 10 points. But as we remind you they were a 21 point favorite the last time Arkansas came in. And the dreaded wave has started down <laughs> below us. But it didn't last too long. Video seat, happy you could join us here for this telecast across the state. And we hope you're enjoying it. We're certainly enjoying being here and bringing you the action. Barry Lunny looking right and left. He's going to keep pitch at the last second, and he made a wise decision. Big, beautiful play by Arkansas. He might go all the way. They finally trail him and stop him at about the 32-yard line. Oscar Malone with a sensational run, but it all started with a great decision by Lunny. I think Lunny has found out that uh, the Tennessee defense is going to stop that first option, which is the dive play. And that's just a good decision. Comes out to the defensive end, makes the pitch. As a missed tackle, and that's just great running. Got by Parker there. There's Davis trailing. Davis, and finally Parker, with great hustle, is one of the men who recovers and finally runs him down. Arkansas, though, and driving with the football. Here's Carlton Calvin, another one of those senior fullbacks who did not play last week, but who's back in action. Jason Parker out of the secondary made the stop, but he picked up pretty good yardage. Across the 25, all at the 24 yard line, and no more than three yards or so for a first down. So Arkansas driving with the football, the score right here would look awfully big to them. They need something positive to happen. Tennessee's defense trying to dig in. Oscar Malone is the tailback. Lenny has had some success with the option. Here he comes on the opposite side, pitches. Tennessee plays this one perfectly. Ball is down. Runner got up and ran on into the end zone. I think they say that he didn't go down. That might be a touchdown. Let's wait and see. The officials are conferring. The runner is indicating he didn't hit the ground. It's a touchdown. John Summers made the hit. It appeared stopped him cold, but I guess the knee did not touch. And so the runner just kept going, went on into the end zone, Malone, and they give him six. What a strange play. Let's take a look. Take a look. Here's the pitch. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh no. That's uh <laughs> knee was down. Both knees were down. That's uh that may be one of the worst <laughs> calls I have ever seen in my life. And I guess he just convinced them on acting, Gondrich, that he had he had succeeded. That was not good. But let's see, does Tennessee have too many players on the field? Take Another a look. look. He's sitting on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another look. Well, whatever. It's wow. going to be a touchdown. Helen's good. When the official calls it. It's whatever he calls it. You don't take them back. That's right. Twenty-one to seven ball game. And the crowd, those who below us who can see the monitors here in the press box area, are as stunned as the rest of us here in the press box. <laughs> yep, that was different. <laughs> There's another another look at it right here. 
Well, his right knee is clearly down, really almost before he got hit. That's right. But it will stand as touchdown Arkansas. <laughs> he just kept going. Of course, Tennessee relaxed. No one attempted to tackle him, assuming that it was down. And it uh, Tennessee is being uh, penalized here. I guess too many men on the field, as you pointed out during the extra point. So Arkansas will actually be kicking off from the uh, midfield stripe. There's the scoring drive. Three plays, 80 yards. Consumed a minute 22. Malone on a 24 yard run after being down. Well, that one will be talked about for a long time. And oh, yeah. Coach Fulmer, I'm sure, will have some comments after the game. Nilo Sylvan and Kendrick Jones are deep to receive for the Tennessee Volunteers. And the kick will go all the way into uh, the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. Kicking off from the 50 yard line. No return expected and indeed none. Tennessee will come out to the 20 yard line and put it in play after a stunning new bit of news here. I, uh, I don't think I've seen one quite like that before. <laughs> now the onus is on the Tennessee offense. So see how they react to a little bit of adversity. Brandon Stewart is in at quarterback now. Another one of the true freshmen at Tennessee, so he gets his chance at quarterback. See some action here. Arkansas expecting a run, brings everybody up, and uh, they're ready for James Stewart, and they drop him for a loss. Well, we got past the first obstacle. No fumble. Brandon's had a tendency to have fumbles with the snap, and he got, I think they've worked that out now, and this was just a great play by the defense. Stewart stopped Cole by Conley and Hayes. Philip Hayes from free safety. Arkansas read that one all the way, figuring the freshman probably would hand off the first play, and they were right on the money. All right, Stewart now looking at a third down and about 13 situation, or second down and 13, and he fires. He's got his man, Billy Williams. Nice play. Billy Williams, first down up across the 35-yard line. Stop made by Tracy Cantlow. Now that's that'll get Billy back in the ball game. That that makes up for the drop that he had earlier. But here again is a true freshman. Good drop back. He lines up on the left hash and throws the out to the field. That's something that you just you either got an arm to do that. You can't teach that one. He barely got it away as you saw the Arkansas defender closing in from behind and probably would have caused a fumble. Here's a pitch back. They go to James Stewart and he gets a little bit of yardage a couple of yards on the play up to about the 39 yard line. Philip Hayes and Marcus Adair made the stop for Arkansas. Tennessee leading 21 to 7 here in the first half action in Knoxville Southeastern Conference duel. Brent Gibson Richard Howard both in the football game on the offensive line right now for Tennessee. Brandon Stewart operating at quarterback Peyton Manning of course started the ball game. This is the first series for Brandon. He's back. He wants to throw. He's going to swing it out here. A little safety valve to James Stewart and he turns it into something. Maybe a first down. Tracy Cantaloupe had to come up and make the stop in the secondary but he moved it to the marker and I think a half yard beyond. Brandon Stewart a little drop back shows a little poise here. He's, he's wants to get flushed out of the pocket but he realizes that he's got a safety valve and that's something that young players have a hard time doing when they first start it's knowing where all the receivers are and when you get in trouble dump it off to one of them don't act don't use your running legs all the time use your legs to buy time and dump that ball off to the receivers and let them run with it 48 yard line of Tennessee balls did indeed pick up a first down Stewart's going to throw on first down got a man out there but over fire to Maurice Staley. A little too high, a little too strong on that one, but Staley had a step on the defender and was in pretty good shape. Brandon Stewart just rushed that one a little bit. He was a little bit too anxious. He could have held that one just a tad longer and not thrown on in such a hurry, probably had a completion there. Good good route though. So it'll be second down and ten to go. Ball at the Tennessee 48 yard line. Balls leading 21 to 7. Stewart's got uh, wide outs on both sides, two on each side, a lone running back, Aaron Hayden. He rolls back, 
Tries to fire it out here in the flat, incomplete. Intended for Ronnie Pillow. They wanted to get it in the hands of Pillow, who's got terrific speed. Try to make something happen down the sidelines, but it was not a good throw, and Pillow couldn't hang on. There's Ronnie. Played some quarterback in uh, high school down at Columbia in Murray County. All around top notch athlete. Could have been, Condridge, uh, they say, a, a great safety as well. Yeah, that's right. They did uh, talk about that with his future, but uh, Ronnie's going to catch most of those balls. That's that's one that, oh, wow. Out of the shotgun, Stewart fires over the middle, incomplete. A little bit behind Nilo Sylvan, James Stewart. There's little man, number 33. There was a flag on the play, and so we'll wait and see here. Tennessee. Illegal motion, but they might decline this one if it's fourth down. Yeah. Motion against the balls, and now Arkansas has to make a decision. But I would think they would force Tennessee to kick right here. Illegal motion. On the offense, heavily declined, fourth down. All right, Tennessee will have to punt now. As Stewart got him out of there up to the 48-yard line, but it, then it bogged down. Drive started on the 20 after the kick into the end zone. So Hutton comes in now, and Carl Kidd drops into deep receiving position for Arkansas. Hutton, who has... For the last couple of ball games, really all season, though, punted extremely well. Gets a lot of height on this one. And it's going to take a bad bounce as far as Tennessee's concerned, though. It'll be downed outside the 20 at about the 22 yard line. He had hoped to get a little better roll uh, the other way on that one, but Arkansas will put it into position and not too bad for them. It could have been a lot worse. It's a gamble when you back away from a punt like that, Condridge, because. Uh, it can uh, jump up and bite you, especially if it's on turf. <laughs> Got a little better chance with the grass. A little closer to the uh, 23 yard line at that point. It'll be first down and 10 to go for the Razorbacks trailing the balls 21 to 7 here in Knoxville. Oscar Malone, Oscar Gray are the running backs. Malone at tailback. They put it in the stomach of Oscar Gray and he gets a yard or so and that's about it. Tennessee in the middle is jamming it up pretty good. George Kidd, Steve White made the stop for Tennessee. Tennessee's problem on defense has been that late pitch on the option, which uh, a couple of times today Arkansas has turned into very big plays. But as far as the middle is concerned, Tennessee's pretty well shut that down. There you see the time, 8-18 eight, and running here in the first half. Ball's trying to protect this 21-7 lead. Arkansas trying to get back into it. Need about eight yards for a first. Lunny comes down the line. There's the late pitch, and Tennessee's waiting for it this time. Nowhere to go. Ball's all over him. Big play for Tennessee's defense as they strung it out. George Kidd, Leland Taylor, two of the men there. Take a look at it again. Congress. It's just the down the line option, but as you said, Tennessee is perfectly defense for this. They have two men outside of their pitch man, and when that happens, you're outnumbered. George Kidd, you would expect to run well, but Leland Taylor, it's good to see him moving outside like that. The big man out there. So it's still. Oh, roughly nine, nine and a half yards to go for a first. Lunny on a delay in the middle. There's their first down and more as they get across the 35-yard line. Oscar Malone on the draw play. Delayed it just enough, let Tennessee's defense run by him and picked up the yardage. That was good play selection by Arkansas. They, they got in a basic uh, uh, passing formation, which with that down and distance, you would think pass, and it's just a little delayed draw. Good blocking up front. And there you have it. Hines First down. Got blocked out of that one. First down and 10 to go for the Razorbacks. Seven minutes and a few seconds remaining in the first half. And uh, a little bit of yardage that time from the fullback, Oscar Gray. Let's go down on the sideline to uh, Missy Kane. Missy? Today, what they're going to do at halftime is honor some of the NCAA champions 
With me is Evan Stewart and coach Dave Farrington. Evan, I'm going to brag on you. As a freshman, Evan was the first guy to win, win a springboard NCAA title since Greg Luganis. Also, he went on to win two Commonwealth medals and the World Championships in Rome. Very big. As a freshman, do you have other goals left from that? That's a big year. Uh, yeah, I, I still, you know, I want to win uh, two NC2 two, eight titles in a year and then go on to win an Olympics. That's my goal. Okay, 96. 96. You'll be competing for Zimbabwe, of course. And I'm going to ask real quickly, Dave Parrington, what a big, big thing for him to win world championships under 20 years old. Yeah, it was really amazing. You know, Evans always had the talent, but to be able to put it together with his head and go and compete at that level and win the world title was, as a coach, the most exciting thing for me, and I'm sure, obviously, for him, the most exciting thing in his career so far. These guys both are from Zimbabwe, both Dave, who's on the Olympic team for Zimbabwe in 80, Evan, hopefully 96. I think they said one of their biggest thrills is being down here on the field, right? Yeah. One, one of my goals since I've been here at UT coaching is to be able to get down on the field, so I'm very excited today. A little different back home, football a little different then? Uh, yeah, we play rugby back home, so it's kind of the same. No padding and stuff like that. I mean, th this is a lot bigger, though, you know. Okay, well, you deserve the recognition you'll get during halftime. Thank you. Well, the recovered fumble by Tennessee. It was recovered by George Kidd. Shane Burton really caused the fumble, and now Tennessee in good field position and moving with the football. Aaron Hayden is operating at tailback now. Stewart hands off to Hayden. Hayden gets hit solidly after he stepped into the hole for a couple of yards. So once again, the balls have got it on a turnover in Conridge this time. They've already blown a couple of chances on uh, turnovers to score. They need to make something happen this time. Need to make something happen, and they, the Tennessee offense has just got to take this ball and put it in the end zone. They've had two turnovers before this one and haven't capitalized on either one of them. So uh, this is this is a challenge. This is a big series for the Tennessee offense. Carl Kidd and Del Delco made the stop that time. Those are the two safeties for Arkansas. Out of the eye backfield. Stewart fakes it to his tail. He's got a guy wide open. He's got a lot of yardage for his first down and runs out of bounds after picking it up. Brandon Stewart showing some speed getting to the outside and when it opened up uh, Condridge called it for him there. That was a good play. He made a decision to take it himself, but he did have a receiver open. This is just a bootleg, and if you'll watch, the little hesitation by the quarterback gives the play time to develop, and he makes a Brandon makes a good decision there to tuck it down, go for the sticks, and get out of bounds. I like that as a freshman. Get out of bounds. Don't take those hits. <laughs> they don't take them even when you're a senior, right? That's right. Here's uh, Aaron Hayden bursting through close to a first down. Nice running by Aaron Hayden. Running behind the left side of the Tennessee offensive line, he crashes all the way down close to the marker. Spencer Brown and made the stop that time from right cornerback. I tell you, he was behind a big load there. Big Jeff Smith from Mex County just cleared the way there for him. Big Jeff is he's well, Jeff, having a good day. He's having a good day so far. It's close enough to bring the chains in. They'll stretch it. There's Aaron Hayden out of First control. Down. No, uh, missed about it. An inch short there. You got it, Tom. Inch short. <laughs> but the balls are in good shape for the ball. Just shy. Length of the football, as you see, they're shy of the 20 yard line. And they find themselves now with a second down situation, a play in which you can do almost anything you want. Because uh, the defense has no idea what's coming right here. You can throw it, you can throw it long, short, or just be safe and go for the first down on the run. Let's see what uh, Coach Cutcliffe has called for Brandon Stewart. They play it safe and they go down to the 15 yard line and pick up the first down. Mark Smith and Marcus Adair made the stop for Arkansas. What Tennessee's got to do is get points out of this, so they don't want to take a chance. I don't think Conridge with anything in the air right here, if if they could keep the ground game going. That's right. And uh, with with Brandon Stewart at quarterback, even if they do try attempt to pass, they have the uh, option of him scrambling around and making something happen with his legs. All right. Tennessee with a golden opportunity right here. Here's Stewart handing off to Aaron Hayden. And again, the left side of the Tennessee line does a nice job as he crashes down just shy of the 10 yard line. Curtis Thomas, defensive tackle, 270 pounder, made the stop for the Hogs. 
There's the senior tailback from Detroit. And the rushing yardage is about as close as you're going to get right there. 125, 128. Most of Arkansas's come on big plays. Big plays yeah. on the uh, the late pitch on the option. Tennessee with the receivers two up set on the right side this time, and then the eye backfield, a definite running formation. It looks like, and they're going to throw out at it. I can't find anybody. Got a holding penalty. Looks like. Oh my. Bulmer will really be livid if this is true. <laughs> Tennessee probably going to be looking at a penalty right here and they've already had a one costly holding penalty in this ball game. A motion penalty that didn't help either but uh, we'll wait for the official ruling. That's Mose Phillips number 19 over there. I think he was the victim. Not the victim the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> He thinks he was a victim. Yes. Rolling. Offense. Well, they are going to call holding, and they do step it off against Tennessee. It moves the ball back to the 24-yard line. Really about halfway between the 23 and 24. At that point, Tennessee will be looking at a long situation. About 17 yards to go for a first down, but it is second down. There's Fulmer probably through the cap while we were... <laughs> Wide out. Passing formation. Stewart tries to delay it in the middle. It's Aaron Hayden weaving oh. for a little bit of yardage. One more man to go, and he might have broke it all the way. Mark he, Smith was that one man, though. If he keeps his feet, that's a touchdown. He, he made a good move to get past the line of scrimmage, and then I, he was in open space there and just kind of tripped up. He knew it, too. He was really disgusted with himself. There's Danny Ford down on one knee checking his defense which came into this ball game number three overall in the Southeastern Conference. They've given up 21 points and they're very fortunate not to have had more on the scoreboard. Tennessee's had a couple of other golden opportunities they let slip away. Stewart wants to throw. There's his interception. Had a man open behind the defense but uh, just threw it right into the hands of Mark Smith. And there's the third golden opportunity Tennessee has let get away today. They still lead 21 to 7, but actually they've squandered uh, many scoring opportunities. Three real good ones. I know. They could have had touchdown or field goal. Brandon wish he had this one back. He just underthrew this ball because you've got the perfect scenario. You've got a linebacker covering Joey Kent, and it, you you can't draw it up any better than that. That's a linebacker out there covering a wide receiver and. You know, you should win that battle every time. You'll see the Tennessee uh, receiver is well behind the defense here. Just throw that one up and over. That's a touchdown. There's Joey Kent, number 11, in perfect position to score, but the ball never got to him. So Arkansas takes over with three minutes to go. Tennessee got to play defense now. Arkansas deep in their own territory. A whistle. Oscar Malone is pushed back. I thought I heard an early whistle there, but we'll I don't, see. I don't think the Tennessee players will stop it. Whistles anymore after that. Last I don't play. think so. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to make sure they're down. Corey Stone, Leland Taylor made the stop for Tennessee, and the ball is pulled back to the 10 yard line. It's going to be a second down situation. Well, about nine yards to go for a first. Let's see what you call deep in your own territory if you're Danny Ford. You play it safe. They come down the line. Tennessee spread out and played it beautifully. Sean Summers hit Oscar Malone. What a play by the secondary, especially Summers. I think he's down that time. Yeah, Sean put him down before. This time he put him down for sure. All right. Tennessee could still get the ball back here before halftime if they can hold on one more play. It's third down and roughly 13 yards to go for a first. What do you call here, Kondrich? Do they dare run the option, uh, that wide pitch out here? Uh, that's a kind of a gambling play, but it has worked for them today. That's been their major ground gainer play this, this game so far, and I really haven't seen them throw the ball downfield yet, and I don't think this would be a time to, for them to start, but you never know. I, I think we might see the option play wide. That's been their most consistent ground game. 
There is uh, Lunny talking with the brain trust. You saw Tennessee across the way. Coaches trying to devise a scheme here that will stop them, force them to punt. Tennessee could get it back. There's today's attendance, 94,997. And they are watching an absolute perfect football weather. We started today with a temperature at around 73 degrees. It's probably gained a couple of degrees right now, but just ideal and practically no wind at all. All right, big down for both of them right here. Lenny. Might be a draw play. There it is. You called it, Condridge. And he did not get the first down. Show Oscar him. Malone. The old show him the pass formation, run the draw play. That's safe. And gave the punter a little more room. And they'll just punt it back to Tennessee. Oscar Malone was hit by Scott Gallion and Tyrone Hines that time. And it's short of the first down, so Arkansas will be forced to kick. But the clock has stopped with a minute 58 to go here. And Tennessee is going to have some time to work with. Uh, interesting to see who they bring back at quarterback right here. Each quarterback has thrown an interception today. Tennessee on top 21 to 7 with Alabama coming in next Saturday evening. 6.30 Eastern game on that one. 5.30 Central and... After that, after three straight home games, the balls will have to go on the road to Columbia, South Carolina. A team that's playing extremely well of late. So you just look up and down the schedule, and uh, Conrad, you see nothing soft for the balls. Oh, no. It hadn't been soft since day one. It's, uh, it's uh, been a very, very tough year with scheduling the way teams that Tennessee's had to play. Matt Waite in punt formation. Big freshman. Six foot, 225 pounder. Sean Summers waits for his kick and he gets a lot of foot into it. Back Summers up to the 36 yard line. Reverse. And they hand the reverse to Ronald Davis. Davis can't find much room. He gets it back up too close to the 45 yard line. Good idea, but Arkansas wasn't fooled on it. And I see a yellow flag down, which might indicate a clip or blocking from behind here. Tennessee been plagued by some that's personal, a personal foul. foul against Arkansas. Probably wow. a little bit of a late hit in there. But the balls get a bit of a break here. After the dog, late hit on the kicking team, first down. Ball will be moved into Arkansas territory as the official steps off the big one. Peyton Manning back in the game. 15 yards. Brings it all the way down to the Arkansas 40 yard line. First and 10, Tennessee. So Tennessee with another opportunity. They're leading 21 to 7. A total yard situation. Tennessee with a pretty big edge in total yardage. Here's Manning on a delay. And Mose Phillips kind of stumbled as he got the handoff and didn't really have much leg power to get in there. Willie Johnson from linebacker. Six foot, 223 pounder made the stop. The clock shows you a minute 26 and running. And Manning shows you some arm as he gets his first down out to Mose Phillips. Mark Smith, the linebacker trailing, made the stop for Arkansas. Good little job of clock management there by the freshman. And by the senior fullback. Mose has been around long enough to know where those sidelines oh, are. Oh, yeah. Mose knows the ropes. <laughs> Tennessee offensive line has done a nice job today. Lehman is out of there with a leg injury right now. Here's James Stewart still fighting, still fighting inside the five and finally run out of bounds. Close to the goal line by Willie Johnson, who trailed it all the way. But the little man got it down to the four-yard line. That's just a great effort, great run. Watch, watch this burst right here where he breaks away. He just runs past him, and then the strength and power that he has after gaining a little weight and doing stuff in the offseason, preparation made him much stronger back this year. And you can see it right here. Has a little burst of speed, then he just takes his power and runs right through arm tackles. That's why he'll play on Sunday afternoon someday. Here's the handoff. 
in the middle. They fight with Stewart. I'm getting telling down you, he is a strong. <laughs> to about the two-yard line, and he shouldn't have had over a yard out of that. Willie Johnson. He who almost. Really, he is, almost scored. He's about the same size as uh, Johnson's a 223 pounder and little man's close to 218. They need to get it close enough for him to go up and over and he tried it but he came up a little bit short. Looks like maybe a half yard short as Arkansas clogged the middle expecting that Curtis Thomas defensive tackle a 270 pounder was at the bottom of that stack. Tell you, Arkansas defensive line did a great job of penetration there. He, they changed the line of scrimmage and put it back on the Tennessee side of the ball, and that's what caused that play. Tennessee, I think now has got one timeout left. It's 29 seconds to go, so they got what appears to be a sure field goal. Although nothing is sure in football, but it looks uh, about as easy, really easier than an extra point right now. But I think they're going to try to punch it in and see what they can do right here. Danny Ford. And his assistant coaches gathered around. Timeouts, Tennessee, none. I guess that's it. So if they can't get it in, Condridge, they're going to have to hurry. But 29 seconds gives them enough time you've to get, got, you've got get set time. up. Yeah. Third down and less than a yard, about a half a yard to go. There's I, Kippy Brown. I think they're. I think little man Stewart will get it airborne. He's one of the best at doing that. And all you have to do with him, with his leaping ability, is have a stalemate at the line of scrimmage. The last time, last play, they didn't get that. The, the defensive line for Arkansas penetrated the line of scrimmage and got in the backfield. If, if the Tennessee offensive line can just get a stalemate, little man Stewart will go up and over, and it'll be a touchdown. So Lehman back in there, so he's all right. Let's see if he goes over. There he goes. Touchdown. Tennessee. There you have it. <laughs> James Little Man Stewart with a high dive. Here you can watch the Tennessee offensive line. Watch this stalemate. See, when, when the line scrimmage stays there, Little Man Stewart has room to leap, and when he has that room, there's not very many people that do that any better in the league. Play took four seconds. 25 to go. Bexford sets it, hits it, breaks it. Lance Wheaton is the holder. Mark Holland is the snapper for Tennessee. And those two guys uh, deserve more credit than they pro probably get because uh, they make no mistakes. That's right. The people don't realize how important a holder is. Here's another look. There's a leap up and over. Notice how he protects the football, turns his back to the defenders, and he just he's just perfect at that. He's, he pra they practice it a lot, but James Stewart is by far the best person I've seen doing that. Up and over drill. Turn your back to the defenders. They've just announced to the crowd here that John Bexport has broken the Southeastern Conference consecutive mark, which had been held by Alabama's Van Tippen. And so the crowd gives him a standing ovation. Good now job. he will get right back to work and kick off. Carl Kidd and Madre Hill are deep for Arkansas with 26 seconds to go. The Hogs trailing 28 to 7, and frankly, they're quite fortunate that it's not more. Tennessee's had a couple of other big opportunities that they let get away, but. Still, they're out there right now, 28 to 7. Let's see how Arkansas plays it here in the last uh, 26 seconds of the ball game. Do you squibble this one down there, or do you kick it and give them a chance to run it back? I believe I'd squibble. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what John does here. They tried a little poocher. Yeah, a little soft one in there. And Tennessee gets downfield pretty good and covers it well. The problem with that is you're always afraid somebody will break out of a pile like that. When they do, they've got clear sailing, but Tennessee held on to the ball carrier that time, and Terry Fair was one of the first men down, along with Mike uh, Nunley, who was uh, the man who pulled it in short that time. Audrey Hill and Carl Kidd never had a chance to get a hold of the football, the burners for Arkansas, so the up man took it, and uh, Fair got down quickly. So Arkansas has got 20 seconds here to try to generate some offense. We'll have a comment with the coach uh, Fulmer here at halftime. Missy will try to arrange that for us as soon as the half is over. 
28 to 7. Let's see if Arkansas puts it in the air or if they play it safe. And that's what they're going to do. Keep it on the ground. Bouncing outside there is Johnson, the tailback. Marius Johnson and Tyrone Hines would not let go. I think that was it. I don't think they'll run another. No, play. they're not going to try to stop the clock, although they have a couple of timeouts left. They're going to let it go. And Tennessee is going to go into the dressing room with a very impressive 28 to 7 lead here at the half. They had some opportunities to score a couple of more, but still, you got to be very pleased with that. When you're operating with the young quarterbacks, they threw each threw an interception. Tennessee had a big fumble. They had a couple of uh, penalties that uh, stopped drives, but uh, overall, they did a great job. Let's go down to the sidelines now where Missy Kane is standing by and we'll uh, get her a report. Missy? You know, Coach Fulmer, you've got to be excited about how you established that run so early, scoring well despite some turnovers. I am very pleased with our running game. Obviously, the two freshman quarterbacks down close, they're not children anymore. They need to make those plays or throw it away. But uh, I'm very pleased with the defensive effort, except for that one series. And uh, I hope we're becoming a better football team. Tyrone, you got to be happy with Tyrone Hines, middle linebacker. Tyrone has, has made plays, and that's what he's out there for. That's good. Okay, thank you, Coach. Okay, back to you guys upstairs. All right, thank you, Missy. Well, Condridge, I think uh, we should uh, certainly be a little bit surprised at the way Tennessee has moved the football here. Not that Tennessee doesn't have a very capable and outstanding offense when it when things are are going well, but. Hey, look, uh, Peyton Manning played most of the way. Brandon Stewart saw. Well, they, they made critical mistakes when you're down in the scoring zone. I mean, you just heard from Coach Fulmer. I think he's going to stop using that term, young quarterbacks. He says now that they're, they're not kids anymore. They're grown up, and it's time that they stop making mistakes like that. When you get down in the orange zone, it's... And then he realized, I said, well, I'll give it a try and see what happens. It's time to stand in there. Good job of the offensive line, too, John. And he and John Ward have been calling yeah. games and cutting up ever since. I wasn't paying a bit of you. Well, that's all right. <laughs> Neither are the listeners, really. But the truth is, fans continue to enjoy tuning in to the voice of the Vols and his sidekick, Bill Anderson. All right, uh, interesting report there on uh, Bill Anderson, who's been an awful big part of the University of Tennessee broadcast, the University of Tennessee football program uh, down through the years. We'll have some more guests for you here shortly. Conridge uh, here in the booth. It's 28-7 uh, to 7 in favor of the Tennessee Volunteers. Big first half. We touched briefly on the offense. Let's praise the defense, too, because they did an outstanding job. And, and let's face it, Arkansas had some opportunities, too, when they didn't catch. Conversions, Tennessee four of seven. That's good, and uh, that's something that they've been uh, working hard on converting this year. The third down. So, Godridge, uh, they did a good job there. They did. Right now, we've got a, a highlight of uh, let's see. That's the, the oh the bootleg with Peyton Manning and first touchdown to Mose Phillips. He's just a, a bootleg to the short side of the field. He dumps it off to Mose, and they really had a fool. This is a disguised blitz by safety. And uh, boy, they never, never saw him. That that hurts, folks. When somebody hits you like that, that really hurts. Lunny never saw him. That was a well disguised blitz. Here's another bootleg play. I think this might be the interception. It is. This was an ill-advised throw, and I think if Peyton Manning had to do over again, he would tuck that ball under and run it in. This is just the. Oh, this is the another fumble. This is a touchdown for Tennessee. And what happened there? Well, yeah, Mr. Lunny just, hey, he, he didn't take care of the ball. He was there trying to look downfield and didn't get a chance to tuck the ball away. Ben Talley knocks it out. Touchdown, Tennessee. Tyrone Hines going in. Up and over. James Stewart, as I said before, he's one of the best at doing this. They practice this with the mats. And, it's just an up and over touchdown from one or two yards out. All right, back to live action. Second half underway. Bexford, long, deep kick, and it goes into the end zone. That's an absolute perfect kick for a kicker because there's no chance for a return, even if they field it in the, in the end zone there. He's right on the out-of-bounds mark, so that's... 
and uh, that's something that they had been uh, working hard on converting this year the third down so Godridge uh, they did a good job there they did right now we've got a, a highlight of uh, let's see that's the, the oh the bootleg with Peyton Manning and first touchdown to Mose Phillips he's just a, a bootleg to the short side of the field he dumps it off to Mose and they really had a fool this is a disguised blitz by safety and uh, boy they never never saw him that that hurts folks when somebody hits you like that that really hurts Lenny never saw him that was a well disguised blitz here's another bootleg play I think this might be the interception it is this was an ill advised throw and I think if Peyton Manning had to do over again he would tuck that ball under and run it in this is just the oh this is the another fumble this is a touchdown for Tennessee and what happened there well yeah Mr. Lunny just hey he, he didn't take care of the ball he was there trying to look downfield and didn't get a chance to tuck the ball away Ben Talley knocks it out touchdown Tennessee our own Hines going in up and over James Stewart as I said before he's one of the best at doing this they practice this with the mats and it's just an up and over touchdown from one or two yards out. All right, back to live action. Second half underway. Bexford, long, deep kick, and it goes into the end zone. That's an absolute perfect kick for a kicker because there's no chance for a return, even if they field it in the, in the end zone there. He's right on the out-of-bounds mark, so that's where you want to put them to assure that no one comes out of there. Arkansas puts it in play on the 20-yard line, down 28-7 to seven now. Conridge, do you expect them to open it up here if you're down by uh, three touchdowns? I think they've got to do something. The only running play, the only play, positive play that they've had has been the outside pitch on the option. And as far as throwing the ball downfield, as the stats show, they only have 24 yards passing. I think they, it's about time they open it up a little bit. But They give it to Oscar Malone, and he is nailed right at the line of scrimmage. Scott Gallion. In to make the stop. So Tennessee waiting for that one. There's big number 93 Gallion, who since being moved to the outside has played even better. That outside position, I think, is his spot. It, it suits his talents much better. And it's certainly good to get a man of Tyrone Hines' ability in the middle. There's Barry Lunny Jr. Not much through the air. Oscar Malone is opening a tailback for the Hogs here in the second half of play it's time to put it in there there he goes he's got some time swings it out a little too I low get on that one <laughs> that's a killer for the receiver <laughs> that when uh, the way things have been going I think I might have picked that one up and run it in you never know that's right that was close to being a lateral all right coming up now will be third down for the Arkansas Razorbacks they still need about 10 yards to go for a first ball right where it started on the 20 yard line this is the situation you don't want to be in third and long where everybody in the stadium knows you got to throw it or run a draw play and he's going to throw it he's got some pressure he got his pass off it's complete and it's fumble. Be fumble picked up by Tennessee Jason Parker It was intended and completed really to J.J. Metters. Metters only weighs at most 160 pounds. He's five foot six. Tennessee creamed him and he turned it loose. Jason Parker, number seven. What a year he has had. He has been maybe the most consistent Tennessee football player. He has not had a bad game this year. Well, take a look at this. It's a good execution right here, but I'm going to tell you. That is just one. That was Hines, Tyrone Hines. Tyrone. And I mean, that was a shot. That was just uh, jarring the ball loose was you know, an incredible hit right there. Peyton Manning takes it over in great field position at the 28 yard line. Fakes the little man, fires incomplete. Intended for Billy Williams, but well behind Williams. In fact, almost. Tracy Cantaloupe had a shot at intercepting right there. Good arm strength that time, but uh, the accuracy was off. I think Peyton would like to have that one back. He kind of pulled the trigger a little, little early that time, and uh, you know, that's going to happen. But he's going to complete a lot of those, though. You just wait and see. Only time, Conrad, uh, <laughs> you've been there. You know it's it takes time to to be patient, uh, and patience is the main thing for a quarterback uh, in a situation where he's in right now. Peyton Manning, a big guy, six five and a half. 
Flips it oh, out here. Got play. great running room. Big, big little play. man. Touchdown, Tennessee. Big play. James Stewart goes all the way. Had he not cut back beautifully at the five, he could have been tackled. But there, the veteran shows you why he is such an outstanding runner. Instinct took over at the five-yard line and took him in the last five for the touchdown. Great call that time. Great call. Just a little slip screen underneath to the backside. After they made the from the shotgun formation, you usually don't throw many screens out of that. So that was good play calling, good formation. And uh, got a little screen play and touchdown Tennessee. Bex Ford is in the record books. He was on the last kick, and uh, there it is. If you watch little man Stewart come underneath, little underneath screen to the weak side of the field from a shotgun formation, which is a passing formation, and it's very rare. You don't really throw a lot of screens out of the shotgun formation, and that's the, you, you get, that was a great call and a great formation. Tennessee up 35 to seven over the Arkansas Razorbacks, and this crowd except for seven or eight thousand across the way from Arkansas enjoying it immensely right now. Perfect day and pretty much perfect offense in the second half here for Tennessee. Carl Kidd drifts deep along with Madre Hill for the Razorbacks. Bexport will kick off. He should be pumped. He's the new record holder for consecutive points after in the Southeastern Conference having broken Alabama's Van Tippins record in the uh, first half of play and adding to it already here in the second. Andre Hill back there number 34 is a true freshman and is going to be one of the most exciting players in the Southeastern Conference in uh, the next few years. All right Bexport has the ball to his liking. The official seems to be ready and we're ready. Here on video seat we're happy to have you with us and Bexford sails it downfield it's taken on a short kick at the 20 yard line and the Arkansas player is knocked off his feet by his own man and then almost by his own man and then putting the stop to him permanently for Tennessee is who was that made that Raymond stop? Austin Raymond Austin OK. All right, let's go down on the sideline to uh, Missy Kane. Missy, what you got? Randy Jenkins, a friend of mine, and Randy's really inspirational story. Randy's a high jumper for Tennessee from Spring City. Great name for your hometown. <laughs> and back in 90, he walked on the Tennessee team. Back in 91, he was second in the Nationals, helped Tennessee Vols men win a national championship. Then he had Hodgkin's disease, and he took a medical red shirt, went through radiation, but it never let Randy get down. And Randy, since then, you've won three NCAA titles. We've got some footage down in New Orleans a couple years ago. You went 7-5, but the big thing is that you have a rival, an SEC rival. Tell us a little bit about that. He, well, he's, he's from Arkansas, and he's uh, the past three times I've won. He's come in second in two of them and fourth in another one, and he gave, him, he gave me a big five. I mean, unlike Arkansas was doing today, but he's uh, he knows how to jump. And that was Ray Dokes. It was jump off the footage we saw down at, at New Orleans. And I guess, I mean, people don't realize Razorbacks have won like 12 NCAA titles. That got you pumped just going under, under the, against the best team in the nation. Oh, it did. I mean, it's always a good feeling to beat the best. And, I mean, I went down there and did what I had to do. So, he was tough. Okay, well, thank you, Randy. And Randy's pointing to the 96 Olympics now down in Atlanta. All right, Arkansas is operating with a new quarterback, Robert Reed, a freshman. 6'2", 200 pound is in there and almost turned it over. Ben Talley comes up with it. Uh, the official, though, is going to rule it's still uh, the Arkansas ball. Robert Reed operating. There he is. He's the future at Arkansas. He will take over when Lunny moves out, and he's already getting a lot of playing time. And ironically enough, the other quarterback, Mike Cherry, may be the uh, sure pro among the group. He is six foot four, 219 pounds. Condridge, he's a pure drop back passer. And in Danny Ford's mind, there's no room for a pure drop back passer. Not in his type of offense. No. That's uh, not not his forte. He wants he wants mobile guys. I mean, if you stop and look at the quarterbacks he had at Clemson, they were guys that could move around and uh, make things happen. After Malone picked up the first, you saw the loss of yardage there, and may have been movement here as the flags go down. And with a new quarterback in, new cadence and so forth, uh, that will happen. 
a little quick and you're right the new new quarterback comes in has a little bit different rhythm but as a wide receiver that's, that's no excuse because all he's doing is watching the ball he's not going on quarterback sound or anything like that he's going on movement of the football which Reed in a little bit of a predicament here he's looking at a second and 15 he'll get his call from the sideline and he's got great athletic ability he can throw the football unbelievable strength he may be checking off here he's looking over the defense rolling down to his left and pitches it out got some yardage and not quite enough for a first but a big chunk of yardage that time Jason Parker and Raymond Austin stop Oscar Malone that's uh, been their most successful play all day Rocky Felker former head coach at Mississippi State is on the staff at Arkansas and he told us the Condridge back during the summer that he saw Reed on a knee throw the ball 60 yards that's strong <laughs> that's that's a very strong arm all right Arkansas big third down for them big third down for the Tennessee defense third and about a yard to go at the 49 yard line of the Hogs Reed turns gives to Malone got his first down and about a yard more as he is driven down it was Johnson running out of tailback that time and Tyrone Hines made the stop Marius uh, Madre Hill it was so they've used their third tailback and Tyrone Hines made the stop so we're getting a look at a lot of freshmen we've got a freshman tailback a freshman quarterback in there now for Arkansas Madre Hill is number 34 and Operating a quarterback is number six, that man, Robert Reed. Reed turns, checks his men. He's got a receiver on each side, two on the right side, but they run the ball right in the middle of Tennessee's waiting for it. Corey Stone was the first man to hit him that time. So there's nothing gained on that one. Ben Talley also in on that. I'm rather surprised that Arkansas is not putting the ball down the field. I mean, if they're, I don't think at this point in the game they would be content with just trying to make a good show, and they should be trying to get back into this thing. And I'm just a little bit surprised that they're not putting the ball down field a little more. That's Danny Ford football, though. But he's down 35 to seven. Two back set. Quick throw out here in the flat, and did he trap it or did he catch it? James Perry was the receiver, and it was close. Apparently, they're going to rule it's complete. Ronald Davis on top of him, but uh, not a whole lot gained on that one. They're trying to get it out in the flat and find some running room. Tennessee played it quite well. So it becomes a third down and five. With the ball resting at the Tennessee 42-yard line. Balls up 35 to 7, and here's Reed. With Madre Hill, another freshman in the backfield at tailback. Reed rolls left. He's in some trouble, gets away, shows his athletic ability. Tennessee closing in on him and knocks him down. Ben, ben Talley. Talley. Big Ben would not be fooled on that one. Tennessee did a great job defensively, Condridge. Just a little sprint left, and as you said before, athletic ability can buy you a little time. That's a good little move right there, and boy, a good, good his lineman come back, give him a good block, and Ben Talley puts the final final hit on him. That's a per picture perfect tackle, head up across the body. That's the way you want to teach it. In that picture, you saw number 57. I've been impressed with him. I think this is Leland Taylor's best ball game. He's running sideline to sideline. He's covering a lot of ground. He has great potential. Maybe it's coming forward today. I think Lily's finally getting used to playing a whole game. Fourth and six. They're going to go for it on the pitch. And no. Flag down. And probably a holding penalty, too. Ronald Davis made the hit on Madre Hill. Ronald Davis coming up from the corner. <laughs> playing with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement today. And he made a big play there, and he's fired up. And it's Tennessee fun. will decline that and take the football. Well, you got to give Arkansas credit. You got to go for a case like that. On the You're offense, down by a score of 35 to 7. Even though we're early in the third quarter, their offense hasn't done anything uh, spectacular right. except a, a couple of big runs off of the option. But hey, with six yards or so to go, uh, 
Nobody blames him for gambling there. And they Peyton, went for it and they ran their play that's been successful for bread and butter and it just Davis played it well. Aaron Hayden's in a tailback now. Peyton Manning back at quarterback. Manning hands off to Hayden. Hayden cuts back a little bit and finds pretty good running room. Don Bray made the stop that time out of the secondary. And so Aaron picks up about six. Second down and four. Ball a little bit shy of midfield. It's on about the 46 and a half yard line of the Volunteers. Their most productive showing of the year thus far. We're in the third quarter with 831 to go. Chester Ford's at fullback now. Here's the handoff. And they cut back against the grain a little bit that time. Aaron Hayden got a little more yardage. Mark Smith again made the stop. It's close enough, I think, for a first down. They might have to measure. First down. It is a first as he nudged it just past the marker. There's Aaron. You see how solidly he's built. And Condridge talked about that uh, in the first half, how he and little man Stewart hit the weight so hard this year. And I guess each put on about 10 pounds, didn't they? They sure did. In fact, uh, Aaron went up a jersey size. He got his chest so big. <laughs> and you should know, right? <laughs> yeah. Know a little bit about that. You bring those jerseys around. All right. Here's Manning with the receivers split on each side. Running out of the eye back. Aaron Hayden still operating at tailback. He fakes it to Hayden. He's going to go deep. Long, long pass downfield intended for Billy Williams. Boy, what an arm Manning has got. And when he gets that timing down a little bit more with his receivers, we're going to see some fireworks. Good, good play fake. Good play action fake right there. Peyton probably would have wanted to put a little more air on this one. I mean, he threw it long and deep, but if you put air on it and put it to the outside, which will come because he can make that throw. It's just a matter of timing and that, and that will come in the future. Threw that one about 50 yards in the air. Tennessee looking at a second down and 10 to go right at midfield now. Manning goes into the gun. And it's going to throw out of there. Throws over the middle. It's complete. Looking for running room and picking up the first down is Ronnie Pillow. Willie Johnson, linebacker left side, made the stop that time. Ronnie Pillow getting to see some action. That's a, just an underneath route. Peyton Manning did a good job of keeping his poise, looking the defense off downfield, and dumping it to the underneath man and Ronnie Pillow. Pillow's got good size and good speed. 7.14 to go, clock running in the third quarter of play. 35 to 7, volunteers leading and driving with the football now. Manning hands off to Aaron Hayden, not much there. Drive started after Arkansas failed to convert on a fourth down situation. Don Bray from middle linebacker 6'2", 230 made the stop for the Razorbacks. See Jason Lehman's back in the game, so that's good news. Of course, he is hopping a little bit. Maybe he re-injured that knee, but at least he's back out there, and that's a good sign. Yes, it is. They'll need him next week, big time. All right, here's Peyton. You see his numbers right there. It is back inside move this time and Arkansas plays it very well plays it extremely well Don Bray who's been in on a lot of tackles today for Arkansas from middle linebacker made the stop that time was not fooled at all on the action Tennessee brings in receivers they're looking at a third down and 10 situation probably spread the field here won't they Condridge spread the field of probably be four wides that's usually the formation when those guys come in and that causes the defense to spread out a little bit. And there it is, four wides. As you can see, the defense spread out and good time for a little screen play. Manning out of the shotgun. Got a little time. Fires it over the middle. It's complete to Ronnie Pillow. And he's got the first down. And then some. Good Down job. about the 23 yard line. Mike Nunnerly made the stop. Strong safety. A good job by Peyton to hold his poise and wait for his underneath route to come open. Uh, 
offensive line is doing a great job. They've been doing a great job. All that's Jason Lehman taking taking his man around the quarterback. That's basically all you have to do when you've got a pocket guy. You just push him past the quarterback. All right, Manning. Hands off. Big hole. Fumble. Arkansas's got the football. Aaron Hayden turned it over at the 10 yard line. Arkansas comes up with it. It looks like Mark Smith. Mark Smith will get credit for it. And that's uh, what the fourth time I guess Tennessee has been in scoring position or threatening. This is uh, just a little handoff. You can see the penetrate offensive lineman really knocked Arkansas off the line of scrimmage. But that was just uh, a good tackle and not really holding on the football. I think Aaron Hayden had it tucked away. It was just knocked out of there. Nunnerly was the man who made the hit on him. All right, Arkansas misses, uh, dodges the bullet here. Nine turnovers in this football game. Arkansas has not scored off a turnover yet. Tennessee has got a couple of touchdowns off of them. Tennessee defense has to dig in again, and they do right here, big time. Robert Reed handing off in there to Oscar Malone, and George Kidd from a linebacker spot made the stop for Tennessee. Tennessee defense. Here's some scores. Georgia leading Clemson in the fourth quarter. Obviously, the Bulldogs have that one. Look at that. East Carolina leading South Carolina, 27 to. Hey, and Florida, 29 to three. A lot of people thought that might be a total blowout because LSU has had so much bitter disappointment in the last couple of ball games. Let victories get away. Here's Reed back to throw, being pressured and Bumble. hit. Fumbles. Does Tennessee have it? No. Arkansas's football. Nick Jester was the man I think hit him, and uh, Trey Teague was also in there for Tennessee. Craig King in there as well. You see all of those numbers pop up here. <laughs> they were coming at him from every angle, and finally it was Teague's shoulder. Condridge looks like that uh, jarred it loose. Right on the ball, sure did. Say it's. The ball's been laid on the ground today. <laughs> Oscar Malone was the man who. Here is Reed back throwing. It's incomplete. Beautiful timing on that play. Anthony Eubanks was the intended receiver, and Tennessee Sean Summers arrived just as the ball did. One half inch quicker, it would have been interference, but he was right on it. I think you get a look at uh, Robert Reed's throwing ability right here. That's a tough throw, and he, that was a that was a perfect ball. That's the only place it could be thrown. He did a good job of getting that ball there. Man who defended is dropping back into punt formation now into receiving position. Uh, that's Sean Summers on your screen, and Matt Waite will kick from his own end zone. Steps forward and turns it loose at the one yard line. Gets a pretty decent kick out of there. There's a wall set up. Summers, if he can get to the corner. And he can't get by that one man over there. He got across midfield into Arkansas territory, got knocked down, and right in front of the bench over there. It's going to be Tennessee in great field position when they take over, leading 35 to 7 with 327 remaining in this third period of play. Peyton Manning comes back out at quarterback. Boston College, I believe they're going to do it again, Conry. Wow. North Carolina leading Georgia Tech in the third. A lot of time left in that one. Colorado 21 to 7 over Missouri. Nebraska without Tommy Frazier leading Oklahoma State 6 to 3. Frazier's football is over for the year after undergoing surgery this week for the blood clot. Here's Manning on a swing pass out to Mose Phillips. Mose gets pretty decent yardage about six out of it before Philip Hayes free safety made the stop for Arkansas. Clock running down in the third quarter of play. Alabama comes in next Saturday evening, 5.30 Central, 6.30 Eastern time for the start of that one. It'll be an ESPN game. Of course, tickets will be rather scarce. Rather scarce. <laughs> if you have a lot, you can buy a condo <laughs> later in Florida. No doubt. All right, here is... 
Manning handing off but kind of an ugly developing play there. Jay Graham was the ball carrier and it sort of was slow and materializing and uh, he's got a player a little bit shaken up on this one. It looks like Scott Pfeiffer, Scott the Pfeiffer yes. tight end. And David Horn already hurt coming into this ball game so they're down to Sartell and Trey Peterson who's an offensive lineman who's suited up today in number 99 so he could play some uh, tight end. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Missy. Missy? I know you all know that today is the third annual Tim Karen food drive. Outside, if you brought cans, they would give you a little thing like this, which is Tim. For Tim Karen, of course, was the UT head trainer who died um, very suddenly about three years ago. And with me is Zibby Karen, Tim's wife. And Zibby, this has always been important for Tim as far as charities. And tell me a little bit about this, all the UT people that have gotten together, including your own church for this. Right. Um, Missy, Tim was very involved in his community, and I think he'd be really proud to have something done like this in his honor. But all the campus ministries, a lot of the fraternities and sororities are involved in gathering food for the needy in the Knoxville area. So I hope lots of folks brought their cans today. Okay, and Zibby, tell me that if you didn't today, you can go to John 23rd tomorrow and drop off some cans too. Yes, you sure can tomorrow, or I'm sure any, at any time the Share Food Bank would love to have anything that anyone would like to bring by. Well, thank you so much. Tim was such a special person, very giving person, and his spirit continues now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, down on the sidelines, Missy. There is uh, the tight end Scott Pfeiffer being helped off. Condridge, could you tell if it's a knee or an ankle? I think it was cramps. Really? They were trying to. I think it's both calves cramped up on it. Hopefully, it's nothing more than that. <laughs> and that'll make you just lay down there and squall a little bit. <laughs> that's that's painful. Robert Poole has entered the offensive lineup now too. Here's a uh, swing out to James Stewart, and he's a little bit shy of the first down. Mark Smith, who's been very active at linebacker along with Don Bray and Willie Johnson made the uh, stop that time. Those last two plays didn't, didn't look too good. No, he's shy of the first, so Tennessee has decided to, uh, even though the ball's at the 41-yard line and they're leading 35 to 7, they've decided to go on and kick it away. Tom Hutton will enter the Maybe. lineup. Maybe. They, they do have a fate. Could be. <laughs> You're right, Gondridge. Those last two uh, look like uh, what we used to do on Saturday afternoon out on the sand lot. Yeah. <laughs> they just didn't uh, didn't look good from the beginning. Carl Kidd is deep. Tom Hutton, the left footer, gets it away. Arkansas pulls up. He hits it straight up in the air. If it bounces right, it'll be great. Now they catch it at the 22-yard line. Fair catch call for and taken over there and so Arkansas chooses not to let that thing bounce. That was Dean Beebe who's a veteran player and have made the right decision. OK Arkansas will take over with the football now trailing 35 to 7. They've gone to their number two quarterback Robert Reed. Very Lunny unable to get it done and I think they've gone now to their number three quarterback and that's Mike Cherry. Now he is the pure passer on the team. I'm told by the Arkansas people that he's the best downfield thrower. He's six foot four and 219 pounds. And he drops it on the ground. They scramble for it. Tennessee's got it. Tennessee football. Well, a change of quarterback. It happens so many times. It seems to me like Conridge, it happens 50% of the time. Well, I, I don't understand putting your pure passer in and running a beer. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not the. Uh, Shane Burton caused it, by the way. This looks like just a little miscommunication between quarterback and fullback on the exchange here. He definitely puts it in. He puts it right there. That's just uh, it was not a good play. Shane Burton right there and he wraps it up uh, himself too so he puts Tennessee in great field position ball at the 21 yard line and now Brandon Stewart comes back in at quarterback to see if he can get the team into the end zone Stewart hands off in the middle and they're going to run it straight ahead this time with James Stewart down to just shy of the 15 yard line Philip Hayes made the stop of James Stewart. Tennessee alternating the quarterbacks. Manning has played most of the way. 
Stewart saw some action in the first half. Did throw an interception when he had a man open for an apparent touchdown. Joey Kent was behind the defense, but Stewart uh, came up a little bit short with the pass. So he's trying to get his team into the end zone and get himself some confidence. Here he rolls to the left. And he's going to pull it down and not going to make a whole lot out of it. Arkansas trailing it real well that time. Uh, would not let uh, Brandon Stewart get away. Don Bray was the man who made the stop. Tell you what, without Bray, Arkansas's defense would be in even more trouble today. Bray must have been in on already a dozen tackles. He's been very active today. We've gone under the minute mark here in the third quarter of play. The ball's on top 35 to 7. They're getting quite a few people in and out of there on the offensive line and some fresh people in in defense. Tennessee's played a lot of defensive linemen this year. Anyway, going into this game, out of the gun, we're going to see Stewart's arm. There it is. Touchdown! He dropped it. Did he, he drop it? He dropped it. Oh, they signal touchdown, and yeah. then Marcus Nash let it go. Oh, my. The freshman. Freshman to freshman. Look at it again, and you'll see that he had it. The official's arm already was going up, and... Oh, what a tough break. Just a little corner pattern with an underneath route. As you can see, Brandon Stewart makes a great throw. The quarterback tries to drop off and come back and help, but it's just a drop ball. Coach so Brown will not like that. They're going to try a field goal from the 29, making it a 39-yard effort. It is up and good. 39 yards for John Bexport. No, Coach Kippy Brown and uh, Marcus will have... Uh, They'll have a private little, session. A little private session with that one, and uh, but they'll get it all straight now. Let, as Kippy told me last week, he says uh, we we might still have to wipe a little pablum off of some of them, but they're they're going up pretty quick. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Maurice Staley and Marcus Nash, and along with two or three others like Greg Tyler, they're going to be great receivers. Nash out of Oklahoma is one of the most highly recruited players in the country last year, uh, but uh, freshman jitters right there. But Tennessee tacks on three to make it a 38 to seven ball game and now they will kick off with 25 seconds remaining in quarter number three as the cheerleaders count down 38 right there. Volunteers will kick off. Arkansas catches Ole Miss next week at home and Tennessee's at home against Alabama. John Bexford, who's put his name in the record books today, will be kicking off for Tennessee. Carl Kidd is back there along with, uh, I believe, Monterey Hill. into the end zone and Arkansas wisely decides not to come out of there. Madre Hill number 34 was the man who received it in the end zone and the freshman with some advice from his teammates decided not to bring it out. So Arkansas will put it in play. They've used three quarterbacks Barry Lunny Mike Cherry and Robert Reed although Cherry was in on one play and uh, Robert Reed's back in Reed is back. They think that he's going to be one of the best to ever play at Arkansas and they've had some great ones. In fact one of them was here Missy talked to earlier Joe Ferguson down through the years. Reed with the Ibex gives it to his tailback. Tennessee closes down beautifully. Ball's waiting for that one all the way. Craig King one of them there Ben Talley and also Quincy Prigmore. There's Tennessee's last scoring drive. Only four plays, 37 yards, with a field goal a minute 27 consumed. It's just a little isolation running back play that you try to isolate on the linebacker, and uh, Tennessee was having none of that. I like the way King is playing. Craig King's playing very well today. That's the end of the third quarter of play here. And on video seat, we're happy to have you with us across the state watching the Tennessee Volunteers and the Arkansas.
bless you, Florida. Florida right now has sort of put some distance between themselves, Condridge, and the rest of the league. But uh, yes, they have, and they are for real. I had the opportunity to witness that up here. It's up close and personal. Yes, they are real. Somebody made the comment. Uh, our old friend Doug Matthews, who used to coach here at Tennessee, this might be a good year to come in in second place in the West. Yes. Unless you're just really <laughs> thrilled with visiting Atlanta. That's right. All right, Reed is at quarterback. Andre Hill at tailback, and Reed's going to put it up. He's got pressure. He gets away from one man. He fires downfield. He's got a man wide open. This is going to be a foot race, and Arkansas is going to win it. It's Carl Johnson. What a great, great throw by Reed. And again, it was the athletic ability. It appeared Tennessee had him. Godridge, he just simply got away with good, good athletic ability. And then he did show us that arm. Take a look. Had the presence of mind to see. He gets flushed out of the pocket right here. But good athletic move right there, and he buys a little time. He's looking downfield at all times, and Sean Summers just kind of under, underplayed that, tried to go for the interception underneath, and hey, big call now. He can run. He's that's a big a guy, too, isn't he? Tight end shouldn't run wow. like that. 240-pounder. There's a... the extra point. It's up and good by Lance Ellison. Carl Johnson is six foot two, 240 pounds, and uh, look at him lumber downfield here. He didn't lumber; he looked no. more like a tailback. Good athletic move right there, missed tackle, presence of mind to stay and keep focused upfield. And as you can see, Sean has beat Sean Summers beat pretty good, but Carl puts a little distance between them there. And Sean's not slow. Sean Summers can run, so Carl Johnson must have pretty good speed. All right, it becomes a 38 to 14 ball game with still. Quite a bit of time to go 14 minutes and 46 seconds and with Reed in there at quarterback and big plays like that hey, nothing is safe. This one is not over. Tennessee defensively now cannot relax and I think maybe they did relax a bit on that play at the secondary relaxed to think Condridge when it appeared that uh, Tennessee might have him trapped for a loss. That's true. You can never do that with a mobile quarterback. 38 to 14 Tennessee on top a little over 14 minutes remaining in this contest and nobody leaving. This is a uh, crowd of almost 95,000 today here in Knoxville. And if you ordered perfect weather. Well congratulations you got it. Kendrick Jones Nilo Sylvan will be deep for the. Volunteers here on this kick. Onside kick maybe maybe. Uh, the way he's lining up I'd say that's what they're looking at. I would say for sure now. <laughs> Not. Uh, you don't kick them very far downfield with it laid flat on the tee like that. That's. Well, all all of Tennessee's uh, folks come up except Nilo, and he pulls all the way up to the 20. And so Arkansas, why not gamble here? Trailing 38 to 14, still 14:46. If you get another quick score, then you're back in this thing. Lance Ellison kind of pooches it over the middle, and Tennessee catches it nicely. And. Trying to break out of there and breaking out of there. Almost oh. going is Sean Summers. He almost made a big play. Sean got burned on that long pass and he almost made up for it right there. He did make up for it partially. Uh, Marcus Campbell made the stop that time. Take a look at it again. You'll just see a great individual effort here by Sean Summers. Because on a little kick like that, you don't get a chance to set up any kind of return. This is just great effort right here. Sean almost Sean Summers almost turns this into a big time touchdown. Brandon Stewart is at quarterback for the volunteers with the ball on the 35 yard line of Arkansas. They try to cut it back off left tackle and Jay Graham can't get much running room. Jay Graham sophomore played sparingly last year got great great potential needs a big play for some confidence. David Sanders made the stop that time. The razor end. There's Arkansas's scoring drive and uh, didn't take long, huh? huh? 40 seconds. Reed with the 80 yard pass to Johnson, who did a nice job of running after the catch. Stewart stands up, fires in the flat, complete to Maurice Staley. Staley's got the first down. 
That's a big time throw. That's a quick out to the field, which every coach in America wants their quarterback to be able to throw, but you must possess a pretty good cannon to do that. We have seen both Manning and Stewart with that same type throw today, so the future looks good at quarterback for the balls. Here's Brandon Stewart to the eye backs. Receivers, a couple of them out. It's a running formation, and they run out of it. Uh, it's Pillow or Lane, correction, Eric Lane, who just came in the ball game. Eric is a six foot, 212 pound sophomore. Trent Knapp made the stop. Don Bray again. Don Bray in on virtually every tackle. He's been very active today, Ed. All right, let's go down to uh, the sidelines and Missy Kane. Missy? You know, guys, you see 96,000 fans here. By 1996, it could be up around over 105,000. I talked to UT Assistant Athletic Director Bob Davis just a few days ago. He says they have already started digging. They've already measured underneath here to poor footers. And, of course, remember last year when they pulled the turf up, they had a couple of problems because there's some caves around UT. That's all been cleared. They've measured. They've done all the preliminary work. He said by November 1st, as early as that, they could announce exactly how many seats they will add to this north end zone, filling it in between 9,000 and 10,000. And they could go ahead and start pouring those footers as soon as this fall by 96, we should, could see over 105. And I tell you, the way the balls are playing, every seat will be taken. All right, you're right about that, Missy. And there'll still be a demand for Florida and Alabama oh. tickets. Uh, it doesn't matter how they're playing. They, those seats will be taken. Jay Graham <laughs> dropped a little swing pass, as you saw there during, <clears throat> during Missy's report. All right, Stewart looking, throwing over the middle. Down to the five-yard line. Fumble. Fumble, and Tennessee may have turned it over yet another time. Ronnie Pillow coughed it up. Spencer Brown picked it up. Where's this the score, double figures? This score very conceivably could be over 50 points. Tennessee right now, except for the turnovers. That's twice they have fumbled now around the five-yard line. One fumble occurred. When they dropped it at the six, it rolled into the end zone. This one right on the five-yard line. Trent Knapp was the man for Arkansas snatching at the football. You got to put that ball away. That ball is not tucked away properly, and it just gets yanked out. You know, when you're in traffic like that, you've got to tuck that ball and not swing it around. Okay, Arkansas with their back to the wall here, but at least they have the football. And 95 yards away from pay dirt. Here's the handoff. Not much there. Tennessee met him after a couple of yards. Madre Hill caring for Arkansas. Tennessee pretty well stood him up on the line of scrimmage. Turnovers. Arkansas six. Tennessee five. Tennessee's though have hurt so much because they have been down in scoring range for the most part. Craig King, Leland Taylor were the men who made the stop that time. Craig King will strike you. Hey, there'll be some sessions about turnovers. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> because that can just, this team is well, not good enough to turn the ball over there. It flat out totally cost them the Mississippi State game. Here's Reed. Remember, he can throw it a mile, and he fires out there complete a rocket to J.J. Metters. All five foot six, 160 pounds of him, and Ronald Davis came up to make the hit on him, but he'll move the chains. I tell you, this guy has got an arm. Eubanks, number nine, brings the play in from the sideline. It's a couple of receivers out here at the bottom of your screen. Reed with a long count, keeps it, pitches late, got some running room. Jason Parker came up to make the submarine stop that time up Madre Hill, but this freshman shows you something there too. Arkansas's future looks very bright. In fact, Condridge, I was looking at their two, in some cases, three deep chart. Out of their top 28 men or so on offense, they got one senior, and that's a guard in there, uh, Pat uh, Baker. Nice little pitch outside, and if you watch Jason Parker come in here and make the hit, he's that's exactly what happened. A knee hit him right on the helmet. He's kind of woozy. I think he might have to go out for one play. There goes Jason Parker, who's just been sensational this year for Tennessee. He's all right. He probably will be back. 
but right now he is seeing stars. Little funny lights are flickering. Little, little knee to the helmet. That's not good. <laughs> Probably put Sean Summers back there in his uh, spot. No, they bring in uh, the back that you can pronounce, uh, Condridge. Oh. I know how to say that. I do too, but I'm <laughs> waiting for you. It's Margiasso. <laughs> Here is Reed rolling to his right, firing long, way too long over everybody. Tennessee had it well covered, though. Maragoas, I believe, or something like that, close to that. Smargiasso. Smar. Okay. Yeah. Gesso. Smart Gesso. Okay. <laughs> There's the turnover average per game. Tennessee's got to work on that. That was coming in, and what if they turned it over five times already today? Third down. They need about a yard for a first. So, with 11:15 to go, still plenty of time for a lot of excitement. Reed keeps it. Quarterback sneak and 200 pounder probably has it. It looks like from yes, he does. The official on the near sideline spotted it quickly and gave him the first down. So Arkansas moves the chains. When you got a 200 pound quarterback, you might as well go for the sneak in a case like that. Good safe play. Eleven oh two to go in the football game. Tennessee up 38 to 14. Reed, first down and 10. Going to put it in the air. And he's got time, and he fires. Beautiful pass out to Mike Higgins, his wide receiver, up close to the 50-yard line. But a yard shy. Nick Jester and Terry Fair made the stop for Tennessee, but not until, once again, the chains move downfield. Look at this rocket. Just a little drop back and an outside hook. You've got to rush the passer. You cannot give any passer that much time to throw. There's a true freshman right there on the corner, Terry Fair. Here's Reed, probably going to go with it in the air again. Now he's going to run that option. Tennessee plays it fairly well. They get a little yardage out of it. Madre Hill kind of stumbling, or he might have picked up uh, a first down. As it is, he's going to be about five short. Terry Fair up to make the stop. Your story 38 to 14 with a little over 10 minutes to go. Arkansas still got time. Uh, they got a quick score here to make it a little bit interesting. Yeah, this game is far from being over. The way everybody's been laying it down on the ground. I think the Tennessee defense got to come up big here. Reed pitches last second again it's open out there and Madre Hill gets the first down and more as he gets down to about the 36 yard line of the volunteers that Tennessee's played that well on a couple of occasions but more than not it's worked Brandon Ashley calling his name for the first time today defensive lineman you one of the youngsters that Tennessee feels like has a bright future he made the stop but it was the third quick first down for Arkansas there's the rushing yardage situation and Arkansas catching up in that department. Here's Reed fires over the middle and it's incomplete intended for Anthony Eubank. Tennessee got just enough pressure on him that time. Jonathan Brown a true freshman defensive end out of Oklahoma six foot five two forty five got a little bit of pressure in there that time. With the helmet off there's big Leland Taylor who's had a good game. Leland has not missed many meals as you see. <laughs> I think that's why Coach Fulmer wanted the long jerseys. He's <laughs> taking it upon himself to tuck it under but that's the reason that he wanted all his linemen in long jerseys to not expose themselves. Here's Reed standing up firing and Tennessee defender Davis took a shot at the interception couldn't come up with it. J.J. Metters came up with a reception instead. And they gained some on it. Davis gambled that time and went for it. He would have had open field, but he couldn't quite get there. Not many people are going to get there with the, the strength of Reed's arm. 
Metters is coming off the field holding his shoulder. He weighs at most 160 pounds and he's taken some hits today. All right, here's a third down and five situation for Arkansas. Ball at the 32 yard line of the balls. Reed stands up, fakes, now throws, long, incomplete. Intended for Anthony Eubank. Tennessee had it pretty well covered, although the middle had opened up for him, Condridge, uh, but he had no one really in that area. That's right. That's thank goodness for a little pressure there because there were people open downfield. I think they're going to go for this. Well, you would think so with 8 to. 37 to go in the ball game, down 38 to 14. They need about five yards for a first down, and they're going to call timeout for the Arkansas Razorbacks and talk about this one. Arkansas huddled around Coach Danny Ford. There's uh, Robert Reed, a fine young quarterback. Coaches upstairs here will call down the play and we'll see what Reed comes up with. What would you suspect? Something short and safe here? If they go by true to form what they've been doing, you can look for the, the option to the wide side of the field and Reed bringing it out, probably either pitching it or keeping it. My guess is Danny Ford is lobbying for the run. Yes. And the coaches upstairs are saying, let's throw let's it. Let's throw it. You're <laughs> right. And we know who's going to win that argument. <laughs> <laughs> like I heard Jordan with the biggest punch of 40 to 14. You wondered how Georgia would play today after that heartbreaking loss at Alabama. One point loss when it looked like they had that one. But apparently uh, they came back and played quite well. 38 to 7 or 38 to 14 Tennessee leading Arkansas looking at a fourth down and five to go situation with the ball just shy of the 31 yard line of Tennessee. Tell you what Tennessee's doing something different here. They're coming after him. they're playing man coverage. And they're coming they're after bringing everybody. And he, he got his pass off, but he threw it away, and he was really hit. The pressure paid off. Ben Talley tattooed him. He's slow getting up, but he is up. There he is. He's not altogether there, perhaps, because Talley unloaded on him. And that was a gamble, Condridge, that Larry Marmy came up with and his staff, but it worked. Well, it's it's something different for Tennessee defense. They don't usually line up and come after you. And you know, after a timeout is a good time to come with it because you know that Arkansas never expected a full all out blitz. We've got Rito in, we got Howard in, Brent Gibson, uh, Robert Poole, a lot of freshmen on the offensive line. Peterson also in there. And here's a handoff to Jay Graham, and he gets some pretty good yardage. Jay got close to five on that one before Geno Bell, defensive tackle, drags him down. Against uh, Washington State, Tennessee, I think, surprised a lot of people by blitzing 14 times in that ball game. So that sends a message to future opponents that they will come after you. There's the youngster, Jay Graham, out of North Carolina. Operating at quarterback, Brandon Stewart. Stewart gives it deep in the eye to Graham. And he fights and twists for yardage. He's shy of the first down. Trent Knapp made the stop from linebacker, but he got up to about the 40-yard line, close to it. He's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down. Tennessee needs a first down here to go on and kill some clock. 7:34 and running. Crowd still hanging in here. They've enjoyed some fireworks by the Tennessee offense today. We've seen too many turnovers by both ball clubs, but still some very good plays, some very fine offensive work, and good defense for the most part. Didn't Here's make a, it. It's close. I don't think he made it. To, no, the official on the near side is not even going to give him as far as he went, and as far as he went wasn't far enough. Vincent Bradford made the stop, so Tennessee's going to have to kick it away. And with the uh, second and sometimes third string offensive line in there, Tennessee was unable to get a short yardage situation they needed a couple and they gained practically nothing. So Hutton will kick it away and Arkansas will get the football back with over six minutes to play. Dropping back there is Carl Kidd number two. 
They've got 12 men on the field. Oh, there he goes. Got off. In time. Everybody's counting out there. Now. <laughs> and we're ready to play football again. Tom Hutton, who's having a sensational year for Tennessee, kicking extremely well. 58 yarder against Washington State, turned the field around and gave Tennessee's defense a chance to uh, win the football game. He gets this one away and he puts a lot of foot into it. Kid backs up, takes it at the 12 yard line, comes to the near side of the field, going to run out of football field. But not until he picks up a little bit of yardage up to about the 25, maybe 26 yard line. Mark Holland, man downfield after the snap, made the stop. The snapper. So Arkansas with their fine young quarterback, Robert Reed, who will be probably airing it out some here, takes the field again. Let's take a look at some scores. There's that Georgia 40 to 14 victory over Clemson today. And East Carolina. Right now, shocking South Carolina, but it's not over. Florida in the fourth quarter leading LSU 39 to 18. So LSU is not quitting. Reed pitches wide. Tennessee trying to run him down, and they do. They play that one nicely. He dropped it on the ground, but he was already down. Madre Hill could not get outside. Tennessee struck wow. it out. Nick Jester. They did it. Well, my goodness. <laughs> Boston College. I tell wow. you what, Lou Holtz must be shaking his head. <laughs> North Carolina has beaten Georgia Tech 31 to 24. Colorado at halftime 24 to 7. Colorado has had two last second victories this year. It may be their year. Look at Nebraska Condridge without Tommy Frazier. They're struggling. They, They're may, they may be an average team or just a good right. team without him, not that's a great right. team. He adds another dimension to that team. Here's Reed standing up, firing over the middle. Nice play. Arkansas picks up a first down. That's Anthony Eubanks. Just a little quick pop over the middle. Well, this play is set up by the, the many options that uh, Arkansas has run all day. And then when you start defending that, that's another phase of that series of plays. It's a little pop pass off of the down the line option. Uh, look. Tennessee 38 to 14. Arkansas with the football. Tennessee player jumps, but he gets back in time. A little bit of pressure. He comes out of the pocket. He's got running room. He's still on his feet. Heading for the sidelines and finally run out of bounds is Robert Reed. But again, another first down. You got to like the looks of this youngster. He's an athlete. He, he can do some things and buy some time for himself. He can, uh, as you see right here, the pocket starts to collapse just a little bit. He steps up in and comes out, and this you don't teach this. Whoops. <laughs> you just don't teach that. You're born with that ability. Terry Fair took a shot at him there and missed him, and finally he's run out of bounds or more or less stepped out on his own. So it's 446 remaining in the contest. Arkansas trying to tack something else on the board. Tennessee with some... Fresh faces in there trying to dig in and uh, hold on. Reed got plenty of time. Fires got a man out there and it is complete to James Perry and he is written out of bounds by Ronald Davis. Davis got turned around. Looked like he had his back to the ball that time. Conrich. Yes, that was just a, a little was supposed to be that little dump pass again, but it was covered very well and that that has to be the second option right there to go out wide because He's, his basic job is to just run Ronald Davis off, and he ended up being in the pass play. All right, four minutes, 39 seconds. Arkansas going for a touchdown. If they can score, they'll probably onside kick. And like I say here, it's still four minutes, so hang on. Four minutes in a football game can be an eternity if you're trying to protect the lead, especially. Here's Reed, hit from behind. John Emery. Hit him from behind. Big John from Louisiana came crashing down the line that time from his end position and made a good play. Clock continues to run. Four minutes, 21 seconds to go. 38-14, volunteers. Second down now and about 11 yards to go for an Arkansas first down. Tennessee pretty well knows it's going to be passed right here. 
the other option probably would be a draw but reads back in the pocket he's got all kinds of time you can't give him that much time he's going to run it now and he's going to score easy touchdown for Robert Reed all right Tennessee now is about to make it an interesting football game they have permitted Arkansas in the end zone it's going to be 38 to 20 with the extra point coming up no rush at all that time Condridge and with that athletic ability uh, really he scored without a with token opposition yep none whatsoever that's that's a mismatch right there uh, Robert Reed just showed showed you he's going to be a pretty, pretty good football player he's got a lot of athletic ability and on that play he showed you all of it might be looking at the starting quarterback next week for them here's the extra point is up and good by Lance Ellison so Arkansas now trails 38 to 21 Tennessee let him in the end zone and let him back into the ball game because they will more than likely almost certainly come up with an onside kick. Look at it again here. Just a little. He didn't see his wide receiver open. He pulls it down to run. And like I said before, that's a mismatch right there. Linebacker on an uh, agile quarterback like Mr. Reed, and uh, he just takes it in untouched. Same play again. That's. That's the mobility right there, folks. He just kind of trots in. This is interesting now. Let's, uh, this onside kick could be very big. Tennessee's Nick Jester that time was the man who had some sort of a shot at him, but uh, like Conrad said, it was a mismatch with uh, a linebacker trying to catch a very elusive quarterback such as Reed, so it, it, he couldn't do it. There's your scoring drive. Six plays covered 74 yards with Reed doing uh, the big job himself from quarterback. So now they will try the onside kick or at least if they don't kick it along the ground they will try to pooch it over that first line of Tennessee uh, offensive man there and see what happens. There are two trains of thought on onside kick. One is to just kick it on the ground as hard as you can and hope it bounces off a player. The other is to Try to drop it over that first one and make it free game for everybody on the ground. That's what they tried the last time, and uh, Sean Summers caught it and almost broke it for a touchdown. Sure did. I think you'll see this one on the ground. And he does put it on the ground. Tennessee catches it nicely and drops it. Joey Kent. One of the sure hand guys, a receiver. They put a receiver up there. Normally, Joey Kent is not standing up there on the front line. But he was this time and he pulled it down. And so Tennessee's in good position with 351. But hey, uh, Condridge, they need some uh, first downs right here as we take a look at the conference standings in the Eastern Division. You know, the Tennessee offense has got to do something positive here. They've had gone a long spell here and it's been pretty dry. They've, they've either turned the ball over or not moved the ball very well. And this, this needs to be a good, crisp drive. And they're starting off pretty good. Jay Graham. <laughs> Races it down to about the 36 yard line before Mike Nunnerly makes the stop from strong safety. So that is a good start. This should be an opportunity for those young linemen that are in there playing now to have the game kind of put in their hands a little bit and see if they can just knock them back and drive it down the field. Mark Upton is in a guard right now on the right side for the volunteers. So they do have some uh, people in there who are getting playing time. They're going to measure it's close enough. I believe he's a little bit short but we'll see it was a nice move Rito's in tip about a half of two balls what do you think yeah two footballs Howard is in Brent Gibson Robert Poole and uh, Mike up Upton. Mark Upton so those are the guys in on the offensive line right now for Tennessee and Eric Lane is in right now at tailback or fullback Eric can play both positions He's a hard working guy in practice. Got a great attitude. There's Brandon Stewart looking at short yardage to keep the clock moving and Stewart just keeps it himself and drives it straight ahead for more than enough as he crosses the 35 to the almost 34 yard line. So Tennessee picks up a first down and can kill a lot of clock with that. Three minutes and we've gone under the three minute mark. As Stewart looks over, Stewart needs a drive for a touchdown. He's had some uh, moments of looking pretty good here, Condridge, but uh, 
it hasn't been consistent with him as yet. Yeah, this whole offensive bunch here needs to have a consistent drive, march it down the field. Uh, wow, <laughs> can you get much closer than That's that? That's about that as close as you can get. Tennessee could pass them on this one, and they do with just a, a couple of yards. That should put them at about 214. Now, Mike Nunnerly makes the stop, ball driven out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Jay Graham. Spencer Brown was also in defensively for the Hawks. Take a look at it. Just a little lead play, and uh, the youngster Jay Graham decides to break it outside. I think you'll find that in this league, too many people run well to break them all outside. You got to take it up inside every once in a while. In high school, that's a touchdown. That's a him. touchdown, maybe, but not not in the SEC. Wing on the right side this time. Running formation, and they give it to Graham. He stiff arms, gets a couple of more yards, and really fights. Looks good on that one. Draws it almost to the first down marker. Vincent Bradford, 230 pound linebacker, a sophomore, made the stop. Coach Fulmer urging his charges on. He'd like to see him get in the end zone here and seal this thing. Jarvis Rito and Richard Howard both did a pretty good job. <laughs> Talk about size. Richard Howard is 6'6", 313. Jarvis Rito, a true freshman, is 6'6", and 290. And they are very high on Jarvis Rito. They expect him to maybe become one of the better linemen they've ever had here. And that's the that's the the calling on him. That's what they expect of him. A lot of people, uh, recruiters, called him the number one sneak for the first down. Brandon Stewart should have it. It's going to be close, though. Jarvis Rito was called by some of the recruiting experts last year. Conridge is the number one offensive lineman in the country. He did get it by a few inches. So a couple of quarterback sneaks in this drive by Brandon Stewart, who's like Manning, a pretty big guy. Both of them go over 200. Brandon Stewart right at it, Manning around 207. So Stewart walks his team up there with now 53 seconds to go in the contest and. Just in the last couple of minutes, a few people have started filing out of here. Here's a straight ahead handoff. The thing to do now is to hold on to the football. That one almost came yeah. out right there. <laughs> that, was that was close. Very close. That was Jay Graham being hit by David Sanders. Sanders actually got that elbow and almost pulled it out of there. Well, this one winds down, but it. It's a W, but it wasn't pretty. <laughs> okay, and we've got 13 seconds to go. So this will be the final play of the ball game, if indeed they even have this play. Seven seconds, six. Penalty. And delay. Too much time. <laughs> That's a <the> freshman. <laughs> Four seconds to go. I believe just to kneel down. As you can get in recent years for the Tennessee Players, coaches, and fans. Tide has uh, seemed to have won on years when they had better teams than Tennessee, and then they've won on years when Tennessee's actually had the best football team. And I think last year might have been one of them. Tennessee actually was tied by Alabama last year, but I thought top to bottom Tennessee had the edge uh, in that game last year in everything except that final score. Right, Condridge. They. That's true. And one thing for sure, Tennessee. Offensive squad cannot put the ball on the ground next week. If they turn it over like that against Alabama, they'll have no chance at all. But they got away with it today by uh, coming up with some big plays and off their own. And Arkansas, quite frankly, didn't take advantage of some of the uh, turnovers. So Tennessee wins it by a score of 38 to 21. As they say, it was really not as close as the score indicates. It was pretty well. Despite the turnovers dominated by the balls, country. it was, and uh, the, the the tone was set on the first series when uh, Tennessee took the ball and with a combination of mostly running plays and play action pass, just marched it down the field. And I think they set the tone of what they wanted to do and what they actually could accomplish. And and later in the game, it did it, it got sloppy. And I think there's going to be a lot of talk about turnovers and securing the football when you're in in traffic. You just cannot have those type of things happen and be a successful football team. Well, our record is uh, intact. You and I have not worked a game together. They have not won. That's true. That's so, true. Uh, <laughs> let's take some credit for that big guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go down on the sidelines to uh, Missy K. 